United States to the Republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Greetings. Are we live? Okay, welcome to the November 2nd meeting of the Harbor Committee. Um, present right now is Herb Sambel and Hillary Thayer. I think that um, we don't know who's on. Uh, Chick is here. Um, we have Brant Reiner from Nelson Polk Voorhees, um, Elizabeth Vale, and Carrie. Yeah, Carrie. Kerapi um, is our secretary and producer. Um, I guess the first thing to do is we, we can wait until every, we can we'll hold off in the minutes until uh, everybody is here, if that's all right. Um, the um, should we have a public open to any public questions before we go to um, discussion items, et cetera? It's up to you. Yeah, let's do that first. Um, is there anybody in the public uh, that would like to speak um, about any? Yes, please come up. Sure. Wanted a chance to say hello. Uh, my name is Jim. I've recently taken on the manager position at the St. Harbor Yacht Yard. Just wanted to come in and say hello to everybody and put a face to the name and tell you that we're planning on keeping things the exact same and just keep a clean running marina down there. Great. Yeah. Hey, what's your last name? Shield, S C H E E L. What's uh, going on with the bait shop? What's going to happen in there? Uh, that was something that went on, from what I understand, uh, before Acme purchased the marina. That was something between Louis Brion and Hermes. Uh -huh. And we tried getting him to stay, but he already signed a lease with his new place. I want him to stay. And we're trying to get him to stay. But uh, in the meantime, we're working on getting bait and some tackle beer down there for the local fishermen who pull in every day looking. So, yeah. Well, great. Thank you for introducing yourself. Good luck here. Uh, you've got a great Thank you. facility. Yeah, we're working on cleaning it up a little more too. So, rocks and paint and so on. So, all right. All right. Great to, see, you great to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. Good Thank you. with everything. <clears throat> That's good to know. That's very good. Um, is there anybody else that uh, has any public comments that they would like to make? Saying, you want to discuss now? No, no, prior to the agenda. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Carrie, do you see anybody in the Zoom that is raising their hand? So we are going to switch a little bit. I guess what, uh, before we go to old business, we're going to do, uh, is it Brian, is this Hunter Glover, is this the one? Okay, so uh, for the first discussion item, the Hunter Glover Street. Board, Brian, this has 2031 Moscow Highway, for example, the applicant, uh, which is one Hunter Glover. <clears throat> Actually, lot one and lot two were here before you this evening for a discussion on lot two. A full application for a site plan has been filed before this board. Um, we've got a term of comments with Nelson Pope and Morgan's. They now have a fully submitted application. So we're anticipating being scheduled for a December uh, public hearing before the board. And in the meantime, in an effort to get this board's feedback and see if there's any other outstanding matters. Uh, Wanted to introduce you to the project and let you know where we've come. We've seen part of this project before about two and a half years ago. Some of you that were on the board. Uh, this was uh, 100 Glover is a just over 60,000 square foot parcel that was subdivided into a plan during the subdivision process and hearing. A referral was made to this board uh, with respect to wetland covers and otherwise. Uh, the parcel to the East is owned by the county, which is stewarded by the village or the 
town of Southampton, I should say. That's what, a 10 acre site. That's a 10 acre site. On the 10 acre site, wetlands exist. So it impacts the development of this property. On this subject property, there are no wetlands, but to the east, there's an impact to, the, to this lot by way of what's in the code as to a 75 foot buffer, uh, 75 foot setback for both structures and improvements and a 50 foot vegetated. Uh, Natural vegetated buffer. So the project before you includes that 50 foot wide non disturbance, non fertilization area, and every single structure is located more than 75 feet from the delineated lines. Uh, proposal is for the construction of a single family home that's one and a half stories. Uh, we've received ARB approval for the house, the site, and the plan. Um, we've received final conditional approval from the planning board with respect to the subdivision we're working on. Given the map spot, you'll have a tax map on this lot, and then uh, separately developed lot one, which is adjacent to this. Um, any questions so far? Um, what do you need from us? We're going to need, well, because the property lies within 150 this board to sign off, even though we're meeting every requirement or setback or IA, but we still need to sign up for this board because the property is within 150 feet. If you need all the is there any separation between the wetlands and the property? There's... Yes, I mean, there's, there's, land, there's land. No, but there's no path or road or anything. Uh, not for this lot, no. Okay. There's, a, there's an existing gravel path to the rear of this property uh, that accesses off of Long Island Avenue. But in, with respect to lot two, there was a specific condition that we, the applicant agreed to for the planning board that access to lot two, which is the subject lot, will only be off of Glover Street. Not off of Long Island Avenue, so the gravel area that exists between the development area and where the wetlands are will be redesignated for this uh, on proposal for this lot. So, sounds great compared to some of the things that come to this way. Here, so I wanted to come see if there was anything else that we need to it? work because. We'd like to get moving on that. Well, it's an oversized lot, and it's it is an oversized yeah, lot. Quite, so quite easy, not right. easy, but they're they've met all the stuff back required. Right. What about trees on your lot? Are there trees there now? There's very few. There's very few there now. Yeah, it's kind of all fill, wasn't it at one time? Um, it was a cow pasture way back in the day okay. that was filled, and they continued to fill for a long time. So it isn't in a flood zone, though, so there's no basement, so everything's going to come up. A little dairy farm. A little bit farther than you see now, just because separation of the IA system, separation of the house. So that there will be fill, uh, some fill coming in. And How high are the retaining walls, do you think, for the IA? It's just, we're just rating them. There were no walls. We were able to, we were able to slope up. Great. So, we were able to do that, and that's was in an effort with the ARB, they didn't want to see the table walls down at Lower Street. So yeah. there'll be a hill, maybe from 24 inches of, of height, maybe a little more from the street as you go up. Um, IA systems in the front yards, you'll see the most, most of the pitch there. There has been a full planting plan that was uh, a landscape plan that was submitted and approved during the planning process, and as well as to the ARB. That same uh, plan has been submitted to you. Covenants have already been filed on the property with respect to the buffer because that was part of the planning process to file those 50 foot non disturbance 75 foot non structural. So those have been pretty much part of the file on the final planning board. So huh. um, a lot of the work has already been done, but we're hoping to move forward. So we want to come discuss it with you and hopefully it gets better before December. It's we should be here. <laughs> I hope we're here. Yeah. Any questions? Great. Appreciate the time we'll see you for our application in December. Thanks. All right, Brian. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so I guess we can. Uh, do I have to make a motion to table this until? I don't see it's only a discussion item. Yeah. All right. So we don't have to do anything. Okay, so let's move to old business. Um, an application of Pumpkin Partners. 22 Long Point Road. Is there anybody here? Give me 
giving you the same information in a summary form. Helpful. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. I file was pretty big on this one. Uh -huh. You're sure, I would imagine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, it's how much of it do you carry every to every meeting? It's a. Um, there's a certain amount that I carry, and there's a certain amount I bring uh, just a digital uh, In some cases, I've reduced the size of some of the plans just for the sake of putting them in this presentation document. I have all of them digitally if we wanted to zoom in or go into it. But right now, I'm just the, the purpose of this since we've uh, gone through a number of changes and it's been some time since I've actually presented kind of the full project. I'm going to go through a summary of that. Um, and um, I would ask that one of the benefits of having this uh, is that you can make notes. <laughs> on each individual slide as we go through it. So I would ask that just for the sake of being able to go through it, people can maybe pull most of the questions until the end. Um, so thank you. Um, can you see this? Mm -hmm. yeah. I can see Chick better. <laughs> Is it possible to flip? Yeah, no. Or I can make it like that. You can right. Oh, I never oh. But then the audience can't see it. Can we put it on both screens? No. No. This is fine. Yeah, as long as the audience doesn't want to see it. Okay. okay. So uh, this is an app, the uh, continuing application for Constant Partners LLC at 22 Long Point Road. Uh, so first I'll just run the existing conditions. Uh, the deeded lot area of the property is 40,094 square feet. Uh, under the uh, village code, uh, we have to exclude the area of surface waters and wetlands from that lot area, um, which leaves us with 24,002 square feet of uh, the area that would be used for calculating lot coverage. Um, it's also the area that the DDC has used for upland lot coverage. So that's kind of like what we're using here for most of the comparison. Um, so uh, in the Simpson plans that we have submitted, um, it includes uh, a sheet that discusses uh, kind of the site preparation. Um, so because there's gonna be um, development on the site, we wanna make sure that uh, the, uh, the, the wetlands are, are protected. And also there's a number of trees on site that we're gonna be protecting throughout construction. Um, so I just wanted to go through that. So first, um, uh, per uh, DEC uh, input, um, we have identified that there's gonna be a project living fence located five feet away from the wetland line. So even when we go to install the wire back silk fence, that there's not any chance that the wetlands themselves will be damaged by any equipment or anything like that. Uh, in addition, there's a number of trees on site that we're going to be protecting throughout the course of construction. Um, uh, obviously, there's four trees that are outside the limit of work uh, that we are not going to be touching at all. Um, and then there are 19 trees, which is all in these gold areas here, uh, that are going to be protected throughout the construction process, uh, which is about 4,747 square feet of land. Um, 13 of these trees, of the trees that are on site, are going to be transplanted off site and then reused later on. Uh, there are five trees that are going to be removed. Some of these are uh, non native trees, such as Tree of Heaven. Um, and, so, and I think one of them is a uh, tree that uh, would not um, uh, be able to be transplanted because of the health of the tree. So uh, uh, we would also have to be removing that. However, 10 new trees will be planted in addition to the ones that are transplanted. So at the end, we're going to have 46 trees, uh, trees on site, uh, which is five more than what exists today. Um, so when you take the area of the um, 
uh, the gold line, and then the uh, gold area of the um, trees that are going to be preserved. Uh, the area of disturbance is 18,239 square feet. Um, and uh, because of the erosion control fencing um, and the measures, in addition to the Rainer, uh, we have also submitted a construction protocol report by the Rainer Group uh, that will uh, sufficiently uh, that, that provides the village with a detailed discussion of how construction will go on throughout the course of, of the project and also tell the contractor how it should be going through uh, the course of construction and uh, Nelson and Borges has reviewed that. So uh, we're just trying to put as many things in place to help to protect uh, the site throughout construction so that construction doesn't wind up being a source of a potential adverse impact. Um, and to that point, um, I just wanted to note that uh, under section 285.9D4A, which I note in the upper left hand corner here, um, we've incorporated erosion sedimentation and runoff controls to minimize non point source pollution. That's one of the standards that we have to meet uh, when we can't meet the recommended setbacks under chapter 285. Uh, so, regarding the proposed site plan, uh, we are proposing a, uh, a house with a 1,200 square foot footprint. It's a two story house. Um, there is a 120 square foot uh, second story covered uh, balcony off of the north side of the house. Uh, we have, uh, Sorry. We have 1,440 square feet of gravel pathways around the site. Um, and a 1,049 square foot reinforced turf parking area. Um, the, uh, the IAOWTS, the treatment tank itself will be 36 feet from wetlands. Uh, the leaching field will be 33 feet from wetlands. However, both of those, which I have indicated here, th this is the site plan by um, BDB. Um, the site plan has the 100 foot um, surface water setback on it. However, in this and on your copy, I have highlighted them because they kind of got lost in all of the other information that is on here. Um, so I'm just highlighting the fact that the septic system is 100 feet from surface waters. Um, and uh, in order to install the septic system uh, and the drainage system for the house, um, uh, that requires 530 cubic yards of fill. Um, and uh, there's an additional 310 in order to uh, to make sure that the slopes that come down from those areas in order to lift the septic system and the drainage system above uh, groundwater properly. Um, we just don't want there to be a wall or a steep slope that goes around those. So the other slope, the other amount of uh, fill is to uh, gently slope it down from there. And um, in addition, there is a non service non fertilization buffer, which we are showing, uh, uh, which is 14,000. 321 square feet. Um, this number um, per uh, input uh, and comments from Nelson Smoke and Borkies was updated to uh, remove the area of the path that goes to the water. Um, and uh, so I just wanted to make sure that you know what that number is. I'm sorry, say again what that number? 14,321 square feet. Um, so uh, an important aspect of this project is the fact that uh, because uh, we cannot meet the wetland setbacks, um, we have to be able to show that, uh, uh, well, at least we, uh, in speaking with the DEC and with this board, we have to show the minimum practical alternative. The minimum practical alternative in our view would be one that meets zoning setbacks, however, would be the, have the minimum habitable floor area under zoning. Um, there are a few things about that, which we've gone over, up over again. Uh, the minimum habitable area of a, of a, uh, of a single family residence under zoning is 800 square feet, measured to the interior wall of the house. Um, and I've confirmed that with the building inspector, uh, because this is uh, a FEMA, in a FEMA flood zone, we need to uh, include area within the footprint of the house for mechanical equipment. Um, we can use up to 200 square feet of that based on the code 
On the first floor, we are only using 125 feet of that. Um, the habitable floor area on the first floor uh, is 816 square feet. Um, and then when um, I'm noticing here, I may have flipped the first and second floor. No, no, I did not. I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> I looked at it quickly and I thought that I uh, could use that. I apologize. Um, so, uh, but the total, uh, so on the second floor, um, there's 829 square feet with 39 square feet of mechanicals. Um, and um, uh, that still does not add up to the 200 square feet that we could use under the code. Um, and uh, the reason why we believe that we, we still have two stories, um, number one, the zoning code does not specifically say that you cannot put a second story on top of that 800 square foot uh, of habitable area on the first floor, but also the minimum size septic system that you can have, and Brian Groven from Peter Grosser is here, and he can talk more about this, but the minimum size septic system that the health department will allow you to have is for a three to four bedroom system. So we have three bedrooms. Um, and so even if we were to put all three bedrooms onto the first floor, it's not like that putting a second floor on this increases the uh, environmental impact to the site by having a second floor on top of it. Yeah. I apologize. You asked not to be disturbed, but just one quick factual thing, because I'm looking at the material that you prepare for us and under structures, I don't know what pages is the proposed site plan. It talks about a 1200 square foot, two story, single family home. And this has been a continuing point of kind of confusion, I think. Could you square that with what you're showing there? Yes. Um, yes. So, uh, both of these numbers are measured to the interior wall. They're the habitable floor area. Um, when you go to the, and I should bring up the plans just in a second, and then I will talk as I'm doing this. Um, when you um, uh, measure to the exterior wall, um, which includes uh, uh, a number of, of areas, which you can see that are not in orange on this plan, um, in addition to a roof overhang over the stairs that go up, this is the FEMA compliant house, so we need stairs that go up to the first floor. Um, so when you incorporate, there's a roof overhang over the stairs um, and measuring to the outside of the exterior wall, um, that's where the 1,200 square feet comes from. So the extra uh, uh, 400. 400 some odd square feet is the stairs, a uh, roof over the stairs, and measuring to the outside of the exterior wall. Okay. But, you know, just looking at it, my gut feeling is 1,200 square feet, 800 is two thirds of 1,200, correct? So that means that we have 400 square feet <clears throat> in exterior wall. Uh, That's no, hard for me to visualize with that diagram or the ones that I've been looking at here. So for the second floor, if you were to measure, and, and these plans, um, uh, you know, and I'll bring up the plan. Uh, uh, so yes. So on the upper level, measure to the exterior wall, um, and then this would be so that nine hundred and six, uh, nine hundred eighty six. Uh, plus the, I think it was 39 square feet of mechanical space, which is not highlighted there. Um, and then uh, about 200 square feet uh, of, I guess there's other architectural overhangs to the uh, bottom right of this and, uh, and a roof overhang over the stairs to the bottom left. Um, and 
So that's where the other carrier. Got it. I don't know. It still doesn't look like just looking at it. I believe your numbers, but um, I'm having a hard time sort of seeing that one third of that total area is uninhabitable. But let's go on. Can, can I, I just, you, you made a statement in, in regards to the septic system size for th three or four bedrooms. Yes. Yeah. Okay, and, and you, you, you stated or intimated that because the septic system, at the minimum was sized for three or four bedrooms, that basically didn't make any difference how many bedrooms you had up to that amount? That's um, true. So, so the environmental impact of a single family block, where does it come from? It comes from the footprint of the house, it comes from the use of the house. Um, so if the use of the house of, of a house is the, it, it goes into the septic system. Um, so if a septic system uh, is going to uh, be designed, the minimum is to three to four bedrooms, uh, then the house will want to have three bedrooms in it because that's what the septic system is designed for. So uh, what what is, I mean- It doesn't make any sense. Uh, and let, let me just tell you why. Are you telling me that the same number of people would live in the house, whether you had one bedroom or three bedrooms? I mean, the, the impact on the environment is based upon the number of people. Okay? I mean, basically, it's based upon the number of people who are using the restrooms in the house, you know, per day, per night, et cetera. Three bedrooms will accommodate three times as many people as one bedroom. Three bedrooms will have the same nitro will have three times the nitrogen output on average than a house with one bedroom. That's the impact. So 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 that there's a potential impact of a three bedroom house to have three times the impact as a one bedroom house. Don't you have somebody testifying to this later in the presentation? Yes. Why don't we let him get well, to that? I just well I think these systems are approved and accredited up to a certain population, which is three to four bedrooms. And I think they take into account that there's one or two people in those bedrooms, but somebody- It still doesn't make any, it still doesn't make any differences to the output. The, the, the system takes out a certain percentage of, 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 of the output, okay? It's based upon what goes in. That's not clear. So Brian Grogan uh, with Peter B. Grocer Consulting. So with respect to the septic system, the Suffolk County Department of Health Services is the agency having kind of jurisdiction over the design and standards of health. Their minimum requirements, no matter how big the house is, is so they have two different things. First off, is their minimum requirement is a three bedroom house, is a size you size system for three bedrooms, whether you have three bedrooms or not. If you have more than three, there are designs that you go up to 14, 18, 20, whatever it may be. The other part of that equation is the county sets forth in all of their studies and their nitrogen loading models and everything else that the use is 300 gallons per day per single family house. And it does not differentiate based upon the number of bedrooms. It also doesn't differentiate based upon the number of people. We understand that, but that doesn't address the actual impact. We know what the standard they set is. It's clear. I mean, all of us know what that is if we're working on this for any period of time, all right? But that's not what the actual input into the environment is. It's based upon the number of people, not the size of the system. The, again, it, Every, the water use between different houses is going to vary. So the input. Is, and what does it vary by? I mean, my house has six people in it, and I use. Uh, it, it vary, the answer thousand. is it varies by the number of people. That's the point I'm trying to make. Okay. It's not the size of the system, it's the number of people. Therefore, a house that will accommodate six people staying overnight it will have three times the impact of well, one That's with two not people. That's necessarily a, a, an accurate statement. I mean, I've seen houses with, I've seen clothes with a, a significant number of people use less water than those with two people. Some people will use more than others. Some people take more showers than others. Some people pee more than others, maybe. We understand that. But in general, a house with more people is going to have more of an impact than a house with fewer people. Can you tell us how the county rates these systems? 
I so mean, the, what, the, the rating, the, the way the systems are designed is the county says there's a flow rate of 110 gallons per bedroom and you size it based upon that. And that's for the new IEA system. Right. So a three bedroom system like is on the plants here is sized for 330 gallons per day. That treatment system allows for nitrogen to be treated it down to 19 milligrams per liter is the required number. These foodie systems have been historically operating around eight. Right. So that wasn't quite my question, but that was a nice answer. My question is whether or not these systems, whether or not you're putting through 100 gallons or 300 gallons or not 500 because you have a three bedroom, you're assuming 300 gallons, right? Three bedrooms, <laughs> 110 per each, Correct. right? It's assuming right. 110 right. per each. So what I'm wondering is if they put in the first 100 gallons and then people go away for the last half of the month, and they never use more than 100 gallons. I think that the system, as I understand it, no matter how much goes into it, it's going to reduce the nitrogen to a certain measurable impact. Correct. So, so the systems are, if flow is complete, flow is ultimately it's being treated and flow goes back out the sun, right. back out, because it is a gravity system. So right. it's water in, water out. Right. If you stop using the system, the system, in essence, goes dormant. It still treats but it, there's nothing leaving it. Right. So if there's no water coming in, there's no water going out. So the question is, if you only have, you're only using a hundred gallons and say you're gonna reduce it to eight milligrams of nitrogen, um, would it ever go lower? If you only use a hundred milligrams because you only have one person there, would it go to six? If you have the house full of six people, would it still be eight? I think that's really the there question. There's a number of different like biological pieces to this and part of it is yes, they have the, it, the systems change a little bit depending upon the loading, but it depends on what's coming in. It, again, if it's if it's a high shower output uh, and not a lot of you know actual use of the bathroom, it might be coming in much lower. So yes, the answer could be that it could come out of the two. You know, again, they they have sampling from some of these that yes, they are down in twos or threes. <clears throat> some are up uh, at eleven or twelve. It all kind of depends on what's coming in, but nobody can really predict that. Uh, on a routine basis, because it does, yes, it does vary a little bit per person, per habit, but that's why the county uses numbers like they pick, it, everything is 300 gallons. They, that's the that's the number that everybody uses. Um, you know, even in the, the nitrogen modeling report that we did and the one that the county did, either through LINAP or for the sub-watersheds management plan, uses the same assumptions, such that that's how you could model it, because everything is if we went into that many variables, we would never have an answer. So, yes, it, there is a little bit of a, a difference, but again, it, this system will treat the nitrogen and it's sized and you know in accordance with that. The only point I'm trying to make is is the statement that that was made was based, based about the size of the system determining the amount, and it's not more people. There'll be more of a nitrogen output in general. Okay, now different people is going to differ, but we know that the more people, more of an output. Quite simple. I just, that's not what he was, he was presented, and that's just all I want to clarify. Okay, so let's continue okay. on. You don't disagree with that, right? I do. I, I do. I mean, I, I, well, I yeah. It, yeah. It, it's it, it, again, it, 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 it goes down to what, so for, for instance, I have, I have six people in my, in my house, I have four children. My my boss use has it's him and his wife. He uses more water on a routine basis than I do. So it all depends on what your habits are. Who are you working? We're not talking about the amount of you there. know. We're, we're not I, talking about the amount of water. We're, you know, we're talking about the amount of nitrogen. You know, which is which is which is not based upon the amount of water. You don't create that from taking a shower, for instance. Okay. You know, again, it, it all depends on your habits. Are, are you, do you, I'll say, do you work from home? Do you leave the house? Are you out of the house more hours a day than you're in it? Well, and, I also and, think. So you're, you're going to disagree that, that the, that, that I more people, that more, that more that's people that's will not have, will, 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 will not have more of an impact than a fewer number of people. Okay, fine. That, that's your position. That, Go ahead. That's your position. I respect that. Go so, ahead. Doesn't make any sense, but that's. Marianne, you have a point? Well, I just think that these systems are set up so that they're gonna put out the same level of nitrogen for any number of people up to what three bedrooms allow. Not how it works. I think it is, John. I think it is. Regardless. Regardless. Uh, so it's, it's gonna purify 
whatever that toilet's flushing, no matter how much, many times the toilet flushes. Down to a certain level, no matter how much you put in, that's mm -hmm. not how it works. Yeah, up to like, you know, what three bedrooms couldn't reasonably support. Regardless. Yeah. <laughs> the information that we had provided based on Peter Boudreaux's report indicated that when you compare what we are putting in, regardless of if it's the one to three bedrooms, regardless of what um, uh, that impact of, of this house is, compared to which when you're reviewing environmental impacts, you have to compare it to the existing conditions. And the existing conditions are such that our inputs are so minimal that our project is not going to have a significant adverse impact. Our house is not going to be the reason why a bunch of fish die. Our house is not going to be the reason why uh, the, uh, the balance of the nitrogen loading of Morris Cove and Upper Sand Harbor Cove is going to be unbalanced. It's just not the, the case. So more people put out more nitrogen, simple. Okay. That doesn't yeah, matter I, how I, you don't, treat it. I think we may need to move on. Yeah, let's move on. Sure. Let's move on. Thank you. So, in, uh, in addition to the non disturbance, non fertilization buffer, uh, we um, uh, five, foot, which is all in the upland portion of the property. Um, I'll just go back to slide. Uh, so the non-disturbed non fertilization buffer is uh, what's shown in yellow here. Um, so everything, uh, so the next number I'm gonna give, the 5,000, I think 380 square feet, uh, is showing the area to the south of the house and the area in this section here uh, will also be native vegetation. So that's 5,360 uh, 5, square feet. Um, we're going to be planting that back. So while we are disturbing it in order to uh, build the house, we're then going to be planting that back. Um, in addition, uh, uh, within the wetland area and within the upland area, all invasive plant species on the property are going to be removed um, through, uh, now I can say this, consistent with our DEC approved uh, invasive species management plan. Um, uh, there was a question uh, uh, either at one of the previous meetings or in Nelson Public Board's memo uh, about site lighting. Um, so I can just say that site lighting is going to be limited to uh, within the stairs of the house. It's going to be lights like in the treads uh, that won't be projecting outwards. Um, it's just so that people can see where the treads are. Uh, and then there will be uh, seven bollard lights uh, along the pedestrian path. Uh, which they're only going to be about six inches tall. It's really just for safety so people know where they're walking. And in the event that there's some emergency situation where the septic system needs to be serviced at night, it can be because that's the, the treatment tank is within uh, one of the pathways. Uh, that's the purpose of those lights there. So um, one of the conditions, one of the standards of the code is that site lighting will not have an adverse impact on uh, uh, wildlife this is as minimal as we can make it um, to be compliant with the, we're still going to be compliant with the code, uh, the, uh, the state code, the um, village code, and also their dark skies compliant. Uh, we've already gone through that. Um, so, um, so under, we, we, it's, it's clear that we, we do not meet the, the recommended setbacks of the code. Um, and uh, however, under section 285-9D of uh, the village wetlands chapter, for projects that don't satisfy the standards, uh, the approving authority to you guys uh, shall consider imposing less than recommended setbacks if after evaluation of documentation submitted by the applicant um, that there's certain requirements are met. Um, so if, uh, the Harbor Committee finds that those requirements, which I'm going to go through, each of them uh, have been met, then you are able to grant relief for those setbacks. In addition, the way that it's worded, uh, if there's some part of uh, Section 285, 9, B, and C uh, that, uh, that you would find not to be uh, defined for the project, um, as long as we meet the section under D, um, uh, then you can issue a permit for that. Um, so the first section, 9D1, 
uh, if the approving authority determines that the applicant has demonstrated that there are no practical alternatives which meet the standards uh, set forth in uh, 285.9a, practical alternatives that meet the standards uh, are presumed to be avail uh, available unless that I clearly demonstrate otherwise. Um, so some of this information I, I basically just copied from my original report and just pasted it in here uh, because it's just important to note that an alternative is one that is available to the applicant and capable of being uh, of fulfilling the overall purpose of the project. Um, the purpose of this project is to construct a single family residence. Um, so compliance um, with the recommended setbacks of 9A cannot be met due, due to the configuration of the property um, and the extent of the wetlands on site. I'm gonna talk about that on a uh, subsequent slide. Um, so through the course of the meetings that we have had, uh, the proposed project has been honed down to the essential minimums, this is what I'm presenting, the essential minimums of what is required to have a single family house in the village, county, and under state codes, under all these codes, it's the minimum that, that, that is a potential based on zoning setbacks, based on uh, the uh, where the wetlands are, based on where service <coughs> waters are, based on what we need to have in order to have a single family residence, which is the second system, et cetera. And by doing so, the project, proposed project, uh, um, has shaped to a, the minimum uh, single family residence that is capable of being done as indicated in the practical alternative definition. Um, uh, so we believe that our project is the minimum practical alternative. And uh, for a number of reasons that I've already discussed, uh, the first floor, <coughs> the minimum capital floor area uh, under uh, zoning, um, uh, since the house is located in a flood zone, we need to lift it up. So there's stairs that act as the first floor of the house. Also, uh, we have the 200 square feet, up to 200 square feet on the first floor uh, of, um, of mechanicals. We only have 125. Um, the house has been pushed as far away from the wetlands on the Morris Cove side as possible without requiring any front yard variances from the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, Every single family resident in Suffolk County is required to have a separate system. We've already been through the one to three bedroom uh, system requirements. Uh, the Fuji Clean system uh, that is proposed uh, reduces total nitrogen and biological oxygen demand significantly more than um, what other standards are required uh, by, the, uh, by the county. Uh, the volume of fill required is the, is, uh, the minimum in order to have uh, our drainage system and our septic system above groundwater. Uh, the proposed project has the minimum number of off-street parking spaces. Um, previously, the project was larger and we had sunk it down to be the minimum of uh, two spaces for a three-bedroom house. Um, all accessory buildings have been completely eliminated from the project. Um, there's only minimal pathways proposed to allow people to get to the drive from the driveway to the house and access the <coughs> IOTS and its control box. Um, the proposed project will also eliminate invasive plants on the property. Uh, we're proposing a non-disturbance non utilization buffer that's 14,321 square feet. Uh, additional uh, um, uh, vegetation. Uh, so essentially the upland area uh, will still be covered by 82% 82, 82 of the upland area. 82% of the area that is left after you take out the wetlands and the, and the surface waters is still going to be covered in vegetation. Um, so it's not like that we are just proposing to clear cut and have a bunch of lawn everywhere. We're really uh, focusing it down to what the minimum uh, is. Um, so under uh, the next subsection, um, uh, you are required, uh, you're gonna require us to submit information to demonstrate that the work cannot be accomplished at an alternative site location or configuration in sufficient detail. Uh, so I have to provide some sufficient detail to allow you to make a determination. Um, so uh, the map on the left was a map that was uh, submitted um, with our uh, last uh, uh, September submission. Um, and it shows that um, if, uh, uh, so, uh, no this memo indicated that um, uh, jurisdiction uh, could potentially be taken from the wetlands uh, south of Long Point Road. Um, I, uh, because we have a septic system that's being proposed, um, 
So uh, this shows that um, the, uh, the 100 foot setback here coming from the wetlands uh, to on the Morse Cove side and the 100 foot separate system setback coming from the Ligony Creek side, uh, they overlap each other. So there's a negative envelope. So there's no place uh, where that you could propose a septic system on this property that would uh, comply with any of the 100 foot setbacks um, uh, standards. Um, and uh, also, we, we have drawn uh, the zoning setbacks on this map uh, to indicate that uh, uh, there's only uh, this little uh, pink area here is really the only place that you could potentially propose <coughs> any structure that is 75 feet from the wetlands on. Uh, the uh, Morris Cove side that would also comply with uh, uh, the zoning standards. Um, so uh, based on the information that we have provided, there's no other place that we can put a house that would also comply with zoning. Um, and uh, we believe that in all previous submissions, we have uh, thoroughly answered the questions of the Harvard Community and the Village Environmental Consultant. So the, the level of detail that we have provided is more than commensurate with the scope of the project that we are proposing as a minimum size house. Uh, the uh, approving authority under the third standard is four. So this is the third one. Uh, the approving authority shall uh, require the applicant to demonstrate in sufficient detail that the proposed work and location would have uh, a less adverse environmental impact than any other practical alternative that meets, that meets the standards. We've already shown that we cannot meet the setbacks of 285-9A. Um, and so... Uh, in addition to not being able to meet the setbacks and having the minimum size, I've already covered this, but again, uh, the uh, amount of vegetation that we're proposing is 82% of the upland, uh, and we're taking out all invasive species. So we're not just proposing to uh, build a house here, we're proposing to uh, be a good steward of the land that is left afterwards. So, um, so the entire project kind of in, uh, in scope it's not just a house, it's also the other good things that are going along with it. So these environmentally beneficial factors must be considered. Uh, under 285 um, you may uh, consider imposing uh, less than the recommended setbacks um, based on, uh, if there's another four substandards here. So under subsection A, uh, a buffer zone of an overall with uh, equivalent to the minimum required buffer zones uh, that meet uh, the uh, 285.9a uh, turf fertilizer pesticide, so the 50 foot setback. Um, uh, we would have to show uh, that, that we provide the equivalent protection to the wetland or partial relief of the minimum buffer requirements is both reasonable and sufficient to justify the lesser and overall average. So uh, the, the number of 14,321 square feet. Um, we were asked to remove the area of the uh, walkway that goes to the water from that area. With that area, with that walkway in it, we would have an equivalent of 50 foot of, of, of buffer. This is only the area that is, we are proposing to be under a covenanted buffer. However, again, there's an additional 5,360 square feet of native vegetation that's on the property. Um, so we believe that that is sufficient to meet the standard. Um, and uh, it's not like that the pathway to the water uh, is going to have some significant impact. Um, I understand why we should consider it outside of the buffer, but I, it's still part of the buffer. It's not like we can build anything in there. Um, so it's still, I think it's still consistent with this. Uh, why don't you consider it part of the, why don't you just make it part of the buffer? Just take a path up of no. You, you said you said you had additional vegetation, which was equivalent to a buffer. And I'm asking why? Don't you, why don't you just make it part of the buffer? Uh, because at this point, we believe that we have uh, given enough for the proposed project. Well, wouldn't it give additional protections in terms of environmental protections if it was considered part of the buffer in terms of restrictions on on what could be done on that area? Uh, I am not sure if an additional 200 some odd square feet of native vegetation to be placed under a covenant would add anything else 
to the protection of this property when we cannot uh, use, we, we cannot do anything else to this property without coming back to this board for a permit. Um, we have included in our invasive species mitigation plan, which is going to be something that's approved by this board, if you go that far, uh, that no fertilizers will be used on the rest of this pro on, on this property. We do not plan on using fertilizers. So if the intent is to prevent people from having fertilizers, then we've already said that we're going to do that. So would you consider making the rest of that vegetative area part of the buffer? Uh, yes or no? I would not know. The answer is no. The answer is no. Okay. Uh, under the next uh, subsection B, the location will not impair the capacity of the wetland and the buffer to provide essential wildlife habitat, uh, among other things, food, shelter, breeding, cover, uh, screening, and migratory habitat, as well as the essential corridor connected okay, What is that? Um, Just land. Yeah. The location of our buffer um, and, the, uh, and the location of the wetlands as well. Nothing that we are doing uh, prohibits um, wildlife from using this as a habitat corridor. Um, and uh, because we are putting up uh, fences uh, to ensure that none of the wetlands themselves are damaged as part of the uh, construction. Um, then, then the wetlands will continue to provide that service uh, to wildlife. Um, I, I, uh, I'm not sure about that. You're repaving the road, correct? Um, we're actually going to be taking, making the road uh, into not paved anymore. I know that that wasn't something that I've really talked about because it's on the right of way, but the road is paved right now and eventually the road would be similar to what we did at 28 Long Point Road, uh, would be converted into um, gravel and, and uh, some type of vegetation, but the road is still there. Well, Chick, that brings up an interesting question, which is that the interpretation of uh, wetlands, uh, as far as I can understand, um, becomes uh, an issue when there's an asphalt road. And I have been to this site several times despite the gate that now says no trespassing. Um, and that maybe at one time was a very low tech asphalt road, but the legal interpretation today is that it's an asphalt road. And what you're telling us now is that you are removing the asphalt and you're going to make it a permeable um, roadway. So it no longer will be an asphalt road. And the only definition that I've read is that um, when there is an asphalt road separating the wetlands from the property, all bets are off. Right. Um, I would, I would uh, say that all bets are back on. Chick, I would appreciate a thought on this. Is the code in 285-4A one says the chapter shall apply to all regulated lands within the building site harbor, except for the following land separated from wetlands by a paved road surface, which borders the entire street site property line. That's right. So, yeah. So, uh, Will, I went through this quite a bit with uh, both Fred Thiel as well as um, Liz. And um, our opinion was that based on the way the road is now, the current condition of the road, uh, the jurisdiction would end at the road. In other words, it was still sufficiently intact to be considered an impervious roadway uh, characteristic of an asphalt road, which is referenced in the definition. Right. I, you know, I, I don't know if I'm able to answer the question, what if they remove it and, you know, replace it? Uh, that might be more of a legal question, but it, at least as conditions are now for the purpose of our review, the analysis, uh, we're not able to exert full wetland setback jurisdiction into the property beyond that road. That's That's been the interpretation of um, legal counsel uh, prior to Liz, as well as Liz. Right, that I remember. So Michael, you might want to 
revisit this because uh, in this conversation, your attorney just said, then we'll pave it. Um, you can't have it both but ways. Up, up to this point, just to clarify, up to this point, I was just telling you what we have on paper right now. No, I think the last time we had this conversation, you were going to put that on there. If, if in the event, the, the determination yeah, is. Sorry. In the event, your name? Mary Jane Asado, Burke Flag and Asado, 21 South Main Street for the applicant. Uh, it seems that uh, discussions have been had between your uh, environmental consultant as well as previous council and existing council that this road has to be paved. Otherwise, wetlands jurisdiction will come from the other side. Right. Uh, based on that, I, we're going to relay this to the client and he will have to uh, maintain the road in its existing condition. Which means, uh, you know, it may not be, it, it can't be taken out. So that brings up, well, never mind, it's a different property. They took out the asphalt on 28, but I'm different property. That we will put in I thought that's uh, what. Obviously, um, we will relay this to the client that the existing road in its existing condition has to be maintained. Well, we're not saying that yet. I mean, just, just hold on a second. Chick, are you, what what is your opinion? I mean, what what is is there some detriment to having a, a to having it a, a pervious road? In other words, as I see this, we have to look at the situation as it is now. If it's now, if it's right now, if it's a paved road. We all agree it's a paved road. Then that's where the jurisdiction, you know, you know, ends in terms of you know for this for this purpose. We could certainly we could certainly we could certainly agree certainly. that in the future. As part of this project, you're, you're going to make it into a pervious gravel road. Uh, that, that's not going to change the jurisdiction as of this point in time. If it's an improvement to go to a gravel road, then there's no reason why not to do that. Is that correct? No, I, I doubt the applicant would be willing to do that if it's going to change the jurisdiction in the future to, mm -hmm. other, to the other properties on this road right mm -hmm. I mean, that seems well there's 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 a little bit of confusion about um each property in in each um roadway from right all the way out the end of the peninsula and we know that um the applicant owns some of the other properties so at some point it behooves everybody to be on the same page about what that road may or may not be and i I think that we need to communicate that uh, in a large way and not just um, pretend that this is not contiguous to adjacent properties. However, well, however we can do, however you can do that, um, that needs to be clarified. Liz, um, remind me what the setback is for uh, zoning purposes from a paved road or even an, a pervious road from a structure, is it 30 feet? For zoning well, the rear yard or the front yard. Front yard is 30 feet, right? Yeah. This is a rear yard. Um, pull it up. Yeah, because they make the water side. Water side is the front yard. Is front yard. Right. 30, so 30, is 30 feet is about, I think it might be the same. 35 and 30. Yes. It's, uh, so, it's uh, the principal's real building setback is 40 feet. From? From from the uh, from the right of way the from, from yard, point right. requirement is thirty five. Thirty five is thirty. So, front is thirty five. Yeah. yeah. So you. Front, but this is the back. Right. So. This is the. Do we all agree that this is the backyard that's right, facing the road? This is the backyard. The rear yard is thirty. That's the okay, and so how far is this house is off of the road as 30. it is right now? 30? 30. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's 30. What, what I was asking, uh, you know, uh, uh, a chick was environmentally <coughs> in this circumstance, I mean, what's better to have a paved road or a, or a gravel road? Uh, if you understand what I mean, I mean, is, is there is there a situation where with a gravel road you're going to have run runoff going through the gravel, so that it's so so that that's it's better to have a paved road or 
Are you still going to get a lot of runoff off an asphalt road even more? Well, you get, off, more. You get, more. You get rain off the top of it. I just... So I say, what's what's preferable in this in this circumstances for the for the, the, for the, the, road, is, the road is really outside of your jurisdiction. Right. I mean, you're you're looking at the property. That's your jurisdiction. What's being done on the property? Right. Not the road. Well, I understand that the that, that the property goes to the middle of the road. So no, they own all the way to lot, lot area purposes and what's before this board. That's your lot. That's what's before the board. The proposed construction of the house yeah. on this residential parcel. Yeah, what is shown on the... But it includes property on the other side of the road as well, all yeah. the way to the water, right? Yeah, it does. Uh, right. It does not, no. Oh. It, so, so this property um, uh, extends to uh, the north end of Long Point Road, the right of way. Um, uh, and we have, oh, yeah. up to this point, proposed um, work within the right of way, but the right of way only goes to uh, just before the wetlands, about, um, I don't know, maybe like five feet from the wetlands line. Um, so uh, it does not go all the way to the water on the other side. Yeah. When the subdivision that was filed, there was area on the other side. <laughs> it's gone now? Of the, that other road. Okay. And basically, um, that is mostly gone. Uh, so when you with this lot, the ownership does not extend into that area. In fact, Joe Gaza, uh, and I know this because we went through, I had to research it to determine like it was one of those law school cases of accretion, et cetera. So I discussed with him and he pulled out his map because it was his father who originally had purchased this area and then redeveloped it and redid the subdivision. They never abandoned the original road that was done with the previous much older subdivision. When his father purchased from that developer, a few lots have been sold out, and then they abandoned the underlying map and redid on top of that uh, the lots, but they did not in any way change the road. So this, it's a private road still. However, the bed of the road is separate it, it, as far as uh, tax lot purposes. I think we asked the village whether or not it's a private road, and I thought we heard that it was not. It is a private road. Mm -hmm. I know for a fact it's a private road. It has mm -hmm. not been dedicated to the village of Sat Harbor or any other. <clears throat> That's what private road means. In other words, it's part of the subdivision. Obviously, this ingress and egress with its inhabitants, but it's not maintained by the village of Sat Harbor. Thank you. So, um, tell us where you are. The pages yeah, aren't uh, numbered, yeah, but sure. so uh, the um, proposed house. I, 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 I believe that the that we believe that the uh, that providing the um, uh, the buffer and protecting the wetlands in the way that we are doing so, and uh, the invasive species mitigation that we're uh, uh, including um, will help to ensure that this property stays at that portion of the property more than 89.2% uh, uh, of the property will continue to be vegetation. Uh, that, and that goes to, that, that's the entire deeded lot area <coughs> here um, because we're talking about essential wildlife habitat here. So talking about the entire deeded, everything from the water down to the right of way, 89.2% um, uh, of that uh, is going to be vegetation, so it would, be, it would continue to be uh, essential wildlife habitat and follow the characteristics of that, uh, including providing essential corridors and connective functions, um, etc. Um, we are, and as I've said before, uh, we're not proposing to use any fertilizer, herbicide, uh, fungicides, etc., uh, anywhere on the property. Um, uh, therefore, the entire property will act as a buffer, even if we're not proposing to put the entire area of vegetation under a carpet. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, the approving authority may uh, consider imposing less than the recommended setbacks. We've been through this uh, several times. Can I ask you a question again? Sure. I, I, again I'm, I'm trying to look at the math here. And, and you said 89% of the upland area will be covered by vegetation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now you told us that, that the that the it's upland the area what yeah, was it was twenty four thousand square feet. And this is a death. Not, not, not the first the floor. Floor. Second 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 floor. Right. So, 80, so 82 of the uplands and 89 of the total heated property. Well, so, but are we talking about 24,000 square feet? If we're talking about 24,000 square feet, the upland lot area, 82% of that will be native vegetation. That's about 9,000. Okay, well, I'm, I'm, add, I'm adding up the structures here, and, and that seems to come up to... It's 900, right? About 3,000, 4,000 square feet. The gravel, the, 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 the driveways, the, uh, the pathways. I don't have a calculator in front of me, but. Well, there's also the decks and I'm not sure that the deck is included in anything. Well, it looks bigger than that, but maybe not. Another 120 square feet for this deck that's out there. Um, I just I took these numbers from a previous uh, submission. I know that I went through the math, uh, so I apologize mm -hmm. if, if you're adding them up and it's not coming out to what, we, uh, what I'm <laughs> saying here. At the most recent submission, uh, that I did, I went through uh, the numbers of structures versus uh, vegetation, and that's what I came out to. Um, I can. All right. So, but, it's, but there's a difference. One, one time it was the it was the upland area, and another time it's the deeded area. So that's where where you get some of the some of the difference in. Yes. Yeah, so uh, I can just clarify, help you out a little bit. Mm -hmm. I was looking at my numbers before. Um, if you look at the third panel, I think it was the third panel. Yeah, it's the third panel called the third side panel. These has these numbers are here, so you can keep the total. But if you add up 1,200 square feet, 120 square feet, 1,440 square feet, 522 square feet, and 1,049 square feet, that total is 4,331 square feet. Of total improved areas that includes the pathways, the okay. house, the um, overhead. I'm not sure it includes the deck, deck, though. Yeah, it does. It says 120. I'll go through 1,200 square feet of total two story single family dwelling. So, 120 square feet of second. Story no, I see that. I'm looking at yeah. that. But uh, maybe I don't understand these floor plans because on the first floor, it looks like there's a deck out to one side. Is that not true? It says the second story covered balcony. Yes, that's 120. That's second floor, but what about on the first floor? It looks like there's a deck. Uh, the roof. That just the roof so coverage. Yeah. So again, I'm, I'm sorry. I just want to get this point across. Right. So 4,331 square feet. <clears throat> Those total improvements, site improvements, divided by the upland area, which is 24,000 and two square feet, equals 18% of, of the upland area that that will be part of the site improvement. Okay, so, so, so you, so, so you get the 82. Okay. So I've been trying to get that clear in my head. All right. So that, that's where the upland area versus the deeded area. The upland area is basically almost half of the site because the rest of it is consumed by wetlands. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, it's, again, it just it just changed that I maybe I didn't catch the change there as to the you know as, as to the yeah. whether okay. you, whether you were referring to the total area or the or the upland area. So did some of these gravel pathways go away? Is that what we were just talking about before? No. no. Oh, 
as I've uh, as I have noted for uh, the um, uh, under subsection C of this section uh, indicates that we have to that, that the proposed working location will not impair wetland and surface water quality by uh, we need to incorporate erosion erosion sedimentation and runoff controls uh, both during and after construction we have done so um, and then um, uh, we have to provide mitigation measures to implement in order to um, show that we're protecting. Uh, and enhancing the benefits of the wetlands. Uh, I've been through all of that many times. Uh, the things that we are proposing as mitigation measures, um, including making sure that the house is the minimum size under zoning, uh, all of the vegetation we're proposing, the invasive species mitigation plan, et cetera. Um, so, um, based on uh, our presentation here and the items that we have submitted, um, we believe that we meet each of the standards under section 285-9D, uh, which provides the Harbor Committee with sufficient information in order to uh, issue a permit based on the information that we've provided, which is what the code requires us to do. So uh, now if you have more questions, we can go through anything. Well, only that, that, it, that, it, that it says we can consider uh, Granting a permit, it doesn't say we have to grant a permit. Right. Correct. You never have to grant a permit. I understand it, but I'm just just to make this clear. It's it, it's 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 it yeah. says, I, says I it's, 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 it says consider. It doesn't say that we that we have to grant a permit. And I and I think that that one of the things that that we do consider is the sensitivity of of, of the area that that it could be affected, including the wetlands and the you know, and, and the surface waters. Um, and, and we have a very, uh, in this case, uh, a, a very environmental sensitive area. And, and I'm going to ask Liz, I, 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 I think I asked you this earlier and I'm not sure I got an answer, but are the reports of, of Dr. Gobler that have been done for the village on the, the water quality testing uh, on, on the areas of, on both sides of this, of this property, uh, are they part of the record here? Well, they haven't been submitted by the applicant, but I don't know if the Nelson Corporate Board has submitted them to the record. They would have to. I, I would. I would ask board. that they that they be, that they be made part of the record. With what whatever we have to do to do that, because I think that those test results of the uh, of, of of that area are significant uh, and and are something that the committee you know has to look right. at when they're considering whether to whether to grant a permit to an applicant that doesn't meet the standards. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this go, this goes goes back to your st statement as to as to as to what impact you know one house would 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 have, you know every applicant is going to say the same thing, uh, you know you could have a thousand applicants who say you know well, what impact is my one house going to have, uh, and it goes back to you know if you allow every one of those then you have a problem that's why we have a problem at some point you have to draw the line. Yeah, so um, these fine fellows here, like a quarter after four, asked me to like review the studies. I'm like, oh, so yeah, we have studies and we have them going back to 18 and I managed to go through like 22 and 23, uh, looking at the Upper Sac Harbor Cove, Morris Cove area. And it's probably the most distressed water we have in Sac Harbor. I think I mentioned that at a, one of the many previous meetings we've had. Um, Alexandrium in 22 and I, Diophenesis, Diophenesis and Cochlodinium in 23. And I didn't have time to go back for the other years. It's, it's not usually a straight line. And the water quality, the, you know, the temperature, the dissolved oxygen, the Enterococcus and the fecal coliform bacteria um, are all like the highest, way over the standards. So um, you might wanna say, well, it's dead already. What difference does it make? I don't think we wanna look at it that way. That is not what I said. No, I know you did not. <laughs> um, I, he, he, he intimated that. He, what difference would it make? It's already okay. polluted. What's what's one more family going to make? I, 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 I never explained said. it from environmental impacts uh, point of view and yeah. how someone is supposed to review that. Um, in addition, what I uh, neglected to say was that uh, in uh, our previous submission, I did note that the Fuji Clean systems have an optional. Uh, function of having a disinfection chamber within it. So that, so our position is that um, uh, uh, 
because we are 100 feet from surface waters, which is what the Suffolk County Health Department requires, um, which I believe is based on what the New York State Sanitary Code uh, has required them to require, um, uh, that separation distance allows for the attenuation of bacteria from a septic system before it gets to the surface water. Right. However, if this board wishes to condition the approval on that, on you utilizing the disinfection chamber, then we are- I'd like to know more about it. That might be more of a problem. What do they put in a disinfectant chamber? <laughs> um, bleach. Bleach, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, the, the Fuji Clean Disinfection Chamber is a quiz, it's basically a chlorination system. Yeah. 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 That's what it, that's what it right. is. Right. Yeah, so good. my understanding is that, yes, they require 100 feet from a septic system in a well or surface water. But in fact, that, you know, bacteria doesn't really go much more than 50 feet. But the nitrogen kind of runs free. So, and nothing that we can do is going to really, the amount of nitrogen that does get through the Fuji system, disinfectant isn't going to help no, that. No, it's not going to help no. that. It's really just virus and bacteria, and, and typically on subsurface discharge systems, there is no requirement in the county to disinfect. Right. If it was a surface water discharge, yes. Yeah, we don't, we don't need that. Yeah. Um, are, are there other questions? I have Come, a question. Sure. Um, do you, thank you for everything. Do you have, I think we asked for, more recent elevations, didn't we? I mean, you mentioned a lighting plan for the stairs. Do you have any elevations for this latest? Um, uh, the the um, the elevations that we had. Uh, on there. Um, we had asked the architect to review the elevations that we have previously submitted, and based on the views that we had from those elevations that had been submitted. And I believe that I resubmitted them with that, uh, with, I believe the September um, submission, um, this September. Um, we, uh, uh, those renderings have not changed from that because we didn't, from, from the viewpoints that they were, that's where, like we haven't changed since the beginning of this, we haven't changed um, where the trees are. We haven't changed there. there I think there was one change that, that happened at one point in time, because we had like an elevated walkway that went to the water and we had right. that. But since that time, we haven't changed anything. Yet. So the lighting that you mentioned on the stairs, I think when you first started, you were talking about stairs going to the It was side. on the other side of some trees that were in the rack. So we wouldn't have even necessarily seen that. Let me ask, because I remember a neighbor mentioned the view from across the water or something. I just want to make sure that. So oh, yeah. the, uh, I have all of the lighting, I'm sorry, all of the lighting that we're going to have are like only six inches above the ground, and it's not going to like cast any uh, light from anywhere. And nothing from the overhang down. Nothing from okay. the overhang down. No. No. There's, there's only uh, uh, lighting uh, within the um, the stair treads leading up to the front of the house. To the first floor. Yeah. yeah. So. Which is on, I'm sorry, I can't. That's okay. Which is on the landward side of the house. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this is just like a footnote to this conversation. But I took a look at this from the water, went out there with the dinghy, took a look, blah, blah, blah. And it was really hard not to notice that at 28, your neighbor, there's some pretty severe erosion with the plantings. And I hope you really consider that when you're going forward with the planting plan here. Um, you can just see like this whole ring of little plants and it's just being carved out underneath it. So I don't know how that transmits to what you're planting, planning on planting here. Not a real question, but this is more a statement, but maybe it's a question. I think if this were me and I were asking the Harbor Committee to accept such a step back from our required setbacks, I would be more modest. I wouldn't be using every possible inch that the law could possibly give me and putting stairways here and stairways there that don't count in the overall square footage that you're permitted and decks and this and that. So that what, you know, the law says you get 850 whatever square feet, but in fact, you've got 1200. And I understand how you're doing that and it all makes sense and it's all legal, but it kind of takes me back that when you're only giving us a 62 foot setback that you're just, going to town with whatever you can possibly get out of the law here in terms of the house. 
What Personally, we, I'd be much happier to see a smaller, narrower house. What, what we've and seen- And possibly going and seeing if you can't get some um, uh, consideration on that setback from the road. It is a private road. Nobody's gonna be going up and down there, except for you guys. So- um, with, a, with a private gate. What, Michael, what we've seen since its inception here is the same two-story plan. And um, I have talked to many people uh, about what a uh, minimum dwelling size is in our village. It's 800 square feet. It says on the first floor. It says nothing about the second floor. And I think that it's, as you said, um, in so many words, kind of fuzzy, not real clear. You uh, can look at this plan. I can look at this plan as an architect and give you pretty much all your program in one floor. You can have a kitchen, you can have all the bedrooms. If you take out the mechanical, et cetera, uh, you put a roof deck on top of the first floor, um, you're gonna get pretty much what you want. And I, I, I think that the, for instance, in the town just east of us, uh, the gross uh, footprint is outside to outside. So you've benefited from our interpretation of the code by, I would imagine several hundred feet, the thickness of the wall, I don't know if they're two by six or two by four or one by, maybe they should be one by. Um, just to uh, one thing about that, in, in the town of Southampton, while the maximum size is he said the east. outside, I'm I, sorry, he I said, said east, east. Oh, just east. I'm yeah. yeah. Um, uh, in, in other municipalities, there's there is still this differentiation of that you measure your maximum to the outside. Okay. You your minimum. I, I I get all of that. Yeah. Uh, but I what I don't get, and what I consistently heard from you, and it, it's it's off putting is that you have not changed your party. It's a two-story house put on 860 cubic yards of fill. You haven't talked about the impact of what those, how many trucks is that? How many, how many yards do you put in the truck? Well, how many trucks do you get uh, for 860 cubic yards? So the impact is not de minimis on, on that little, uh, area is you're going to have to repave that road because the trucks will uh, mess it up, guaranteed. But more importantly, uh, I don't think anybody here, I'm not saying personally that you can't build something. Uh, a gazebo with a dock would be a beautiful thing. That would be a gesture to this community that I think we would all say, my goodness. Um, it's ironic that this project looks across the bay at, at uh, John Steinbeck's residence which is now preserved. And Steinbeck was one of the first guys to talk about um, ecology and environment. He allegedly inspired Rachel Carson. Carson. He was very tight with Don Rickles, Ricketts. We haven't heard from too many adjacent neighbors because the adjacent neighbors are the applicant in a different format, I guess. We heard from one neighbor across the bay I suspect if John Steinbeck was here today, <laughs> he would be- um, Apoplectic. That's one word. And I, and I so we, we've gotten to the point where we can talk about all these different things. Um, we've worked on this project for the better part of a year. It's precedent set, setting. There are other people that are lined up behind this project ready to chomp. I've talked to land use attorneys in this town who say when we open the doors and legally, maybe that's what we have to do. We're not saying you can't build something here. We are not trying to deprive your applicant of the use of this property. Um, but I think you've used the interpretation, your interpretation of the code about the second floor. Um, Maybe, may, I, I don't want to say excessively, but I would like you to look at putting your program in the first floor. Mind you, everybody's looking at this without the perspective of what it really is going to be. FEMA houses look like somebody walking down Main Street with their britches pulled all the way up. And they're not very beautiful. They're a part-time uh, solution until uh, the real water stuff happens. And that's what we have to live with. And that's what you're, you're trying to accomplish. 
But if you take out the staircases to the second floor, yeah. if you take out the mechanical in the first floor, if you take out a lot of the excessive um, spaces, you can satisfy your program on floor. You can put the roof deck there and still have that beautiful uh, two, 360. You got a 360 there. Um, that's, my goodness, what more do you need to have as a guest house? And, and we, you know, maybe we're not allowed to speak about it, but I will. This is not a primary residence. It's a very different ask if it was a primary residence. <laughs> well, okay, so I, I'll back that off. I don't know what it is. We don't know what it is. Single family residential dwelling. Okay, but we were we were presented to which, this. Which they, which they stated at the beginning yeah, was yeah. a guest house. As a guest house, they, thank they you. They did state that. It was, so that's, but it's not like um, a carriage okay. house or a second well, dwelling. No, no, it was presented to us. It's a principal well, single family. I, I say that to meet, yeah. the, to meet the zoning requirements. That's what you've got to say, but they did. Well, that they it did. It so was stated that it was a guest house. Yes, was, that's okay. But it could easily be a regular single family. Well, it has to meet the requirements that's for a regular right. single. So family. anyway, oh, uh, that's what you're that's yes, what you're you you presented it as a guest house. It's a single family residence. Don't go there. That was a year ago. What I would like <laughs> to suggest is that you look at that uh, opportunity to put the program in one floor. We're not saying reduce the footprint, et cetera. Well, it is because you don't have to count the stairs. Good point. May I ask a question to the chair? You seem to have objections to the second floor. May I ask why? Yeah, I think it's just volume. It's on top of a FEMA hill. And it's I a... Think, but the, you're essentially, we're talking about environmental impact and, and, and my trying to be argumentative. It's just the impact is it's all the regulatory uh, agencies. That's why you're limiting the first floor footprint, because that's how much clearing is out. So normally, you know, if we're before the board, second floor has been this impact. Do you think it's the volume? Is it the visual? I mean, no, 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 no. So access, that's what it's, it's the volume. The minimum it's, size house in the village is 800. Size footprint is 800 square feet. Yeah. And, and we're talking about the, the, the footprint. No, the environmental impact has to do with the footprint. So and, and, right. and you, well, yeah. well yeah. one of the oh, things is that when you have all these staircases, because you have a second floor, if you just had a roof deck up there, you wouldn't need quite the same elaborate staircases, which would cut down on the footprint, which doesn't count in the 850 square feet. And I, and I, I wanted to take it back to, you know, I, I need- That's to what I'm trying to solve a problem. To, right. To, to, and we're also thinking that maybe that mechanical room on the first floor could go up with what was planned for the second floor and put that up there on the roof deck. Yeah, it, it, it would, yeah. From an architectural point of view, I think this problem can be solved with one floor. Um, and it would just be, you know, less is more in some cases. This, this also goes back to what, what, we, what we talked about earlier, though, is a larger house that accommodates more people has more of an environmental impact than a smaller house that accommodates fewer people. That's the simple. This property has to stand alone by itself. Yeah. I mean, right now, you're, mm -hmm. we're, we're looking at, you're saying, well, they own a joint property. So no, no, this no, property, it's... when we ultimately... When it's built, mm -hmm. will have to go forward by itself. Absolutely. So, totally. so, no, no, we agree with that. We agree, we agree with, with that. that. So, you know, it may be occupied in the future by a year round resident who lives here with various children. We agree. We agree. We agree. We agree. So, we don't we agree. really want to minimum, you know. So, but, but you know, we also this town, think that it could be a wait, 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 wait. Let me just say something. This village right now is struggling with uh, and dealing with. Um, additional dwelling units and what's an inhabitable space. And they're actually getting down to the size of a car garage because car garages are conveniently uh, scattered throughout uh, our town. And it's the interpretation of many people that that's an inhabitable space, that in, it's an in-law unit. It's not a single family unit, but it's an inhabitable space. So 800 square feet is actually twice as large as what the village is considering for um, for me when I retire to be put in the backyard for my children to live in no, the main structure. Right. So that's right. that's all we're the saying. Okay, right. so when, when Michael has worked so hard with everybody 
to get the landscaping to wiggle all of the different things. One of the things to wiggle is the actual envelope. Oh, and we ask simply that, um, and I, that that be investigated. Let me just say further again, this, this again, <laughs> you know, I'll say this, you know, probably a third or fourth time is that the more people, you know, the more impact you have on the environment. And this isn't the minimal size house. This is twice the size of the minimal size house that you could have. I, I'm looking at page nine here. Uh, I believe it's page nine, but addressing the permit standards of 285-9D. Um, and uh, uh, through the course of the meetings with the Harbor Community, the proposed project has been honed down to the essential minimum of what is required to have a single family house under the village, county, and state codes. Well, that's not true. Yeah. Okay? It's not the minimum. The minimum would be 800 square feet. Uh, minimum would be 800 square feet, one story. That would be the minimum. So that statement here is not true. And if and we could discuss, you could tell me how it is true. I missed something. Ms. Parker, I'm, I'm not here to argue with you. I'm trying to get clarification here. Well, I so, so am I. Am I missing, am I missing something? With, with what the applicant is saying. Okay. Right. We're, we're going with their designers. We're going with the owners. So I, I will relay what right. you're saying. And, and, uh, and with yeah. Yeah. Okay. Am yeah. I missing something? Either no. the statement's wrong, or I, or I'm missing something. Is there something in the code that requires it to be the size that it is? The yes or no? Yes. Just a simple yes or no. We, we are in the position that this is a minimum size house. I really don't. You know, no. this isn't John. serving a constructive purpose. Okay. Well, I'm just I'm just asking because I may be missing something John, here. Okay. John, you know you're not missing something. Well, so just let it lie. And again, the, the next, you know, the next sentence is the same, is the same thing. John, I think the point's been made. I just, let me finish the, here. No, I think he's done it. You know, and I just, you know, the next sentence is the same thing. It's been shaped to the minimum single family residence as is capable of being done uh, to become the minimum practical alternative. And, and I'm just saying, yeah. unless I'm missing something. Okay, so we-, we It's not the minimum like practical Martin. alternative. <laughs> okay. Well, I was gonna say, um, I think we've- uh, Herbert, do you have anything? I do not. Okay. Uh, Mr. Warhays, how are you feeling? Good evening, everyone. Well, I haven't- Sorry, Can I haven't join you in- what, what, no, John, no, John, Basta. 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 Wait, I, I think I have a right to ask some questions. All right, here we've had a long presentation. All right, and just one more, one more question. Uh, you, you, you said that uh, you've pushed back the property as far as you could away from the wetlands, or the, the building as far as uh, away from the wetlands as you could and still meet the zoning standards. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. So what you have done is to decide to meet the zoning standards while asking us for basically a variance from the wetland standards. Not variance, we've already been doing that, but yes, continue. Okay, so uh, all I'm throwing out here is the possibility <laughs> that, that you could, and you're not required to, but I'm just throwing out the possibility uh, that you could go to the zoning board of appeal John, I heard and, said this. And, and, and ask for some relief so you could move the property back further. That's already and, been and discussed. Meet it's already so been discussed, that's, John. Yeah, that's been discussed. All right. Okay. Uh, check. Sure. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Hello, everybody. I'm sorry I couldn't be there in person. Uh, Are you sure? <laughs> well, <laughs> no, I'd love to be there. I've actually been battling COVID for the past week, so uh, oh. you probably don't want me in the room, but uh, tomorrow will be 10 days. I'm still suffering from symptoms, but uh, feeling a little better. Um, the new strain is a little bit, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty tough, but um, I, I have been sitting through many of these meetings, as I said, back to when Fred was council, now that Liz is council, um, we thought it was really important for the applicant to make a full presentation uh, to fully vet the project again, because a lot of what we've been doing over the past months has been in memos 
uh, and a lot of back and forth, quite honestly. We do know right back from the beginning and all of your comments relate to this, that this is a very tough site. Uh, we have sensitive wetland and uh, harbor areas, uh, wetlands on multiple sides of the property. We know that the site has no structures currently. A lot of what this um, committee deals with are existing developed lots. We also know that there are no conforming locations for a house that would meet uh, the wetland setbacks. And as a result of all these factors, this has been under review for a very long time. Been a lot of um, uh, basically comments and responses, and in many cases, improvements. One of the key memos that um, I think is important is the NPV memo from July 31st, 2023, where we really did a comprehensive review of all of the materials, found a number of areas of inconsistencies, um, some additional analysis that was needed, and um, it also had suggestions. Uh, the applicant responded to that on September 1st with a very uh, detailed submission, which Mike Chiano from InterScience outlined basically tonight. But there's a lot of background that went into that uh, and also resulted in a lot of changes. Um, one of the comments that we've had all along does have to do with the minimum size house, and that's been debated uh, this evening, and I think it's an important discussion. Um, but there are some notable features uh, just in terms of restoration of the property, invasive species control, extensive native landscaping, uh, an IA system, of course, which would be required anyway, and one of the comments that was in our um, July 31st memo did have to do with bacteria and viruses migrating to surface waters, uh, and that resulted in the inclusion of a disinfection system. Oh. I definitely agree with Mary Ann that nitrogen tends to be conservative in groundwater, uh, and so we looked very carefully at the PW Grocer analysis, um, and I'll have a comment on the at the end uh, about that. What we got back in the September 1st submission is basically a lot of uh, updated plans. I believe the plans that we have received are at least internally consistent between plans. Additional analysis was provided by InterScience and their team. And a number of uh, changes were made to try and address some of the comments uh, specifically having to do with expanding the buffer. I will say that I agree with Mary Ann, and I think some of the other board members uh, agree that the applicant's statement to not consider a few hundred square feet of additional natural area, to me, is really not an adequate response. Given that there is no conforming uh, area on the prop property for a structure, and it does not meet the setback requirements for the buffer, um, I think it's critical to reduce and eliminate impacts wherever possible. So we should look at all available means to increase buffers and um, you know, even small improvements, in my opinion, can uh, add to the buffering qualities, particularly on this lot that's currently vacant and doesn't meet any of the required setbacks. So there are a number of board member comments tonight that are seeking to reduce impacts and I believe they should be considered and they're appropriate consi to consider in the spirit of 285-9D and particularly D1 having to do with practical alternatives. In addition uh, to those comments from board members, um, I would ask Mike to look at the parking area configuration. It just seems as though that could be tightened up a little to further expand buffers. There's kind of a little weird triangle that I just don't know if it needs to be there and it would add to the natural vegetation on the property. There was already some discussion on paths and how those can be minimized, if they can be minimized. And that's where the applicant uh, really <laughs> said they weren't gonna consider further changes, but I think those are valid. Um, the area to the Southwest and the property is not exactly North-South with respect to Long Point Road, but the area basically at the Southwest corner of the house uh, where there's a notation for a tree trunk bench. I'm not sure what that is. It's kind of a trapezoidal area. And, um, you know, Mike had said that the applicant really looks to be a steward of this property. Um, it's a different property than any that we've reviewed. 
it's certainly not going to have lawn, but limiting some of that outdoor space, the beauty of this property is the natural environment. So I think looking at those areas um, could increase buffering, even if by a few feet or a few hundred square feet, I think that's important. Um, I'm also unclear if there's planting proposed over the drainage structures in the front of the house. And maybe Mike can answer that, but if there isn't, I think some type of non deep rooted plants um, could be established there to increase natural buffering. And um, my final comment does have to do with uh, the nitrogen analysis. Uh, and I'm glad that Brian's there. Uh, one of my prior comments was that the density uh, of the property should not consider underwater lands or wetlands for the purpose of determining the concentration of nitrogen and recharge. And so I did find that there's an area of the sonar model, I'm sorry, the Burbs model that um, Brian used that doesn't really consider the density of the property. Uh, so where you have input four, um, I believe that in that location, the input should be changed to 1.82 dwelling units per acre in order to account for the 0.55 acre size of the property uh, that is really what we're talking about in terms of upland area. That would change the nitrogen concentration some, um, but uh, you know, overall, I would say the grocery report did provide additional information for consideration. It added the disinfection, and I may have a couple of other minor comments on that report, but my primary comment had had to do with density that really is not considered unless you override that item four in the model, uh, input four, and put in the correct um, development density. So those are my comments at this point, but I think the discussion has been very helpful and I hope the applicant will take it to heart. Uh, thank you, Chuck. Marianne, you have a question? Yeah, what is your thought on this um, chlorine-based disinfection? I mean, does the that the chlorine then spews out into the surface waters? What's the effect of that? That's a concern to me, but maybe it shouldn't be. Well, uh, let me ask Brian: Is is ozone, or are there other um, more natural elements that can be used for dis disinfection? Or UV would, light? Um, That's what we use at our sewage treatment plant. But I maybe not on this scale. Yeah, certainly I think disinfection is warranted because of the um, minimal setbacks. But, um, you know, I, I would certainly ask the engineer, the sanitary engineer, to see if there are methods that could be used that would not have uh, other harmful byproduct chemicals. Yeah, Chick, I mean, there's, again, that's coming from the manufacturer that's been tested by them. There's been other reports that were included in our report uh, for that. It is an older method of disinfection. Um, UV has it is practical. It is in use in your own plant, but there's a, a bunch of other steps of filtration, and there's limits to UV that I don't know if that would be readily adaptable to an IA system. It has to be the effluent has to be pretty clear. Exactly right. It, it can't be, be mucky, murky. Right. Particle size <laughs> that you like to right. effectively penetrate, and I don't believe that that's practical under an IA system. It is for treatment plants. It's been done. Yeah, I don't um, know what the effluent well, looks like out of this. Can, can you do a little research about the chlorine? Is it something that's... Um... It's not an over... It's Again, it's not... It's it's a very small amount of chlorine. It's not an overabundance of chlorine. It's not like we're necessarily saying discharging a, a chlorinated swimming pool into the wetland. Mm -hmm. It's. I don't think there's a whole lot of um, additional there than what is needed to kind of knock out the virus and bacteria the loads that are campus. We need some information. But so is, is I it, have that in the report that we submitted to you guys. Does it talk about um, how many parts per million, billion, trillion, whatever of chlorine is that. in the effluent? But yeah, there were, again, the reports, the information that I got from Fuji Clean with their reports uh, that were studied out, out of New York State were included in the Burbs model. I just wonder whether or not they anticipate that their system would be um, the effluent is being released how close to the surface water here? 100 feet. 100 feet, right. 
I think the question is whether the chlorine would have an effect on the the the, I, the, I, the I, denitrification, you know, the natural uh, the process, whether I mean, which is based upon bacteria. I mean, well, no, this is on the F one, so it wouldn't impact the denitrification system. This is on basically on the pipe leaving the system. It's because right. okay, this is uh, this is correct. It's at the end of the system. At the end right. of the system. So on the on the right before Last the gas. unit, that's where it passes through, and all it's doing is is disinfecting for virus bacteria. And is that done electronically or mechanically or no, it's it, a gravity flow through system? So as water comes in, it pushes water through the system where it leaks. Who would you um, advise that we get an opinion on whether or not that's you know a good idea? You know, hundred feet from Morris Cove. Other than you, <laughs> um, I mean the the again the health department allows us to be 100 feet from surface water based on. Oh no 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 no! I'm not I'm not concerned about that. I'm talking about the chlorine part. Right, right. But if if your if your concern is whether or not the bacteria is going to get from, I'm actually maybe more worried about the chlorine than I am about the odd you know. Brent, do you have, do you have an opportunity yeah. to look into that? About the, about the chlorinated system side of things. Um, so um, would it be helpful? Okay. All right, so we, we need to research that. We can't solve that I'll problem. Ask yeah, Marianne will ask Dr. Goldler. Um, okay. So just to, just to also add to it, um, uh, one of the reasons for the 100 foot setback to the wetlands is not just and also for wetland setbacks in general, is to provide a buffer between what you're proposing and, and the wetlands. Right. And that's not just it, to provide wetland, it's not just provide habitat, it's also because that buffer is what, especially- Cleans vegetation. the water. Right, exactly. Yeah. So uh, that will also help it's to draw water. up- Right. right it's, it will help to draw up some of the nitrogen. It will help to draw up and-, and the other interactions of, of, uh, of natural processes will also help to take care of things like bacteria and stuff before it gets to the surface. Water. That's why I'm wondering whether or not um, the it, chlorine is like. Which it is required to be maintained on a quarterly basis uh, for at least the first three years. I know that, um, but they are required to be. And if they ever drop below a certain amount, then the county gets involved. Like we have to register all new IA septic systems. It's something that comes out. I know that that was a concern that this board has had is whether or not that the maintenance actually continues, but the health department requires it and requires it's reports. Strange. You have to actually pay that in advance. Yeah. Right. Yes. Well, it usually comes with your system. I'm in the process of getting one. Yes. So usually the installer gives you three, two, three years or whatever it is that's mandated. Yeah. Right. But then after that, what happens? Does the county stay on top of it? Yes. Do they want to see a sign off yes. every yeah. year? The county needs to have, you need to have an annual maintenance contract on file with the county. And you know, every the registration expires three years in the county and then you, it's a renewal, you need to provide another sign on another agreement. Interesting. It's like the DMV. Correct. Okay, um, we, we need to move this along. Um, Michael, thank you. Um, I guess, Elizabeth, we can uh, table this until um, December without further ado. Is that, Elizabeth? Yes. Is that okay? I make a motion. Is that what the applicant's seeking to have happen? Or you know, do you have any... Well, I, I didn't know if you wanted it. They wanted us to get back. Yeah, no, you do. Yeah, they want you to get it. So you yeah, said, so, okay, so, yeah, December. Yeah, so December. Uh, yeah, yes. Yes, I just don't know what the date. The next meeting is December 7th. Okay. Okay. And Liz, I just want to make sure, that w would we do whatever we have to do to have those Gobler reports become part of the record? Chick said you already included it. Did, um, did so you... you could... We'll, ref we'll have Chick follow up with you. Okay. You already included it. All right. Yep. Thank you. Uh, and to answer one quick question that Chick had, uh, the area above the drainage units is being vegetated. Great. So that is part of it. And as, as is the area that's above the leaching field. Uh, so anything that we can put vegetation on, we are putting vegetation on, including the roof. But anyway, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have a motion to table. Yes. I'll make a motion to table this application until December 7th. I'll right. second. Uh, so all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so we will see you in a month. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
recess? You want a five minute recess? Okay, we've only been on this uh, an hour and 45 minutes. That's not long enough to drink a beer, though. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to take a, a, a stretch break. break. Yeah, quick break. And Mr. Chairman, I'm going to uh, sign off and let Grant cover the rest of the meeting, but it's great to see you all. Feel better. Feel better, Chair. Feel better. Okay. Yeah, Thank you'll have you. Come, you'll have to come in person at some point when you're not sick. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Have a good Bye -bye. evening. The end of it, but it's deep.
Okay, back to business. Thank you. Guys. All right, our next uh, applicant is, as I think, uh, for Notre Dame. Thank you for your patience. Good evening, we support your quick work for this on behalf of the applicant. I will be sorry. We were before the board at the last meeting in September, and at that meeting it was discussed about the two items I think that were still left open for the swimming pool and the existing stairs, which were less than 75 feet from the wetlands, even though they are existing. We have, in the interest of time, decided to remove both of those items from the application. So the oh. current application is the six small little additions that are going to fill in the little corners of the house, the front porch expansion, the uh, and then filling in the corners of the rear deck. Do you have a new um, picture for us? Uh, the plans have been revised and were submitted to the board. I believe you have those in your pocket there. They're last dated. Sorry. 1016 of 23. <clears throat> the other so we're to the expansion of Dr. Oh, yes. Here we go. So we can see. No stairs. And so, no pool. Have any stairs coming down to the deck? I know there's a lot of discussion about how to get down for right now we'll just we're going to yeah. eliminate those it'll just be you have to go back into the house and then back out the side doors that are already there in order to access the rear yard yeah, is okay with that that's right now so i think we've met all of the coming. comments that we had last time follow -up questions? Uh, i i don't remember uh, what kind of septic system do you have on this there's a standard septic system, and the owner at this current time uh, is not going to upgrade it to an IA. Regrettable. Does this, have you um, advised the owner that this can be reimbursed fairly? The owner has at this time decided not to upgrade to the IA sanitary system. And as for the COVID, it's not a requirement. Yeah. The, the sanitary is greater than 150 feet from the wetlands. Right, but we're all here like in a zero to two years um, transit time. So anything that happens if your dog pees in the backyard, it's going to be in the water very shortly. Yeah. So it's the same thing with the septic system. So that's yeah, why. This time is not to upgrade the sanitary and IA system. Okay, uh, just for clarification, where is the existing septic? It is in the front yard. Uh -huh. In uh -huh. front of the house, you'll see if there's a small retaining wall yeah. Yeah. along the south property line that kind of cuts up towards the driveway, mm -hmm. it's in that area. Okay. It's shown on the Look back here somewhere. Yeah. page three of the, the earlier list. It's listed as drainage septic and shipping plane in the lower right-hand corner. Mm -hmm. You have the residents here. Right. The sanitary is here. Okay. Well, better that there than... Uh, it is in the front yard, but it is not in the rear. Well, I'm sorry. It's in the rear of the street side. Right. The waterfront side. Okay, for future um, information, that's an easier fix than if it was on the water side. Okay. And is there a fence? There the will be a proposed fence that will be installed along the two property lines, the north and the south side lot lines, and then it will be beyond the 50 foot buffer area. And that again is shown on the site plan as by the architect as well as the surveys. It will be within the 25 feet between 50 and 75 feet. Correct. It is at the back end of the 50 foot buffer area. Yeah, right now there is a uh, a five foot fence. Correct. All of the fencing that is in the buffer area will be removed. Okay. Hillary, do you have any questions? Uh, no, just looking at the removal of the stairs and I'm trying to remember what we talked about. Yeah, it was the stairs mostly. Oh, I just wish we had okay, I wish we had the that. power to reject this because they're not in an IA system, but mm -hmm. we don't have that power. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I, is it, it? Let me ask you, and you don't have to answer this. Is it a financial burden or is it philosophical? They just it, we don't. It's beyond our control. Yeah. All right. 
Well, what's the, what's the, what's the, what's the standard? The standard is based upon the on the percentage, percentage of construction or percentage of cost. Construction, I think. What triggers the IA list? I'll pull it up. We have submitted to the board the um, appraised value of the primary residence as well as the proposed construction costs. Mm -hmm. We do fall below that threshold, 50% construction okay. costs. So that, that is- Yeah, you're not doing it's, much. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's the cost, cost, it's cost, cost. cost basis. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's go. All righty. Um, any other questions? No. So make a motion to close the public hearing. I hear a motion. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. So noted. Um, work with your client on that IA system. <laughs> and seriously. So there'll be a decision for the next meeting, December 7th? Mm -hmm. Actually, well, do you we make a motion to good. ask hold, hold um, Nelson Pope? Uh, Brian? Normally, you would make a motion to do that, and then you've got been so quiet. You know, you've been so quiet tonight, so. Let's, uh, yeah. For you to for them. Okay, let me back this up. Uh, I, I think you can. Close we the we close the public hearing and then we and do then that. You make a decision, yeah. a motion to either advise and you need to draft a permit or you know, put conditions on that you would. So noted. And do I hear a motion? Hold on. I make a, did, did, did I miss it or did you ask if there were any public comments for the close of the ask. hearing? No. Excuse me? You did not ask. I did not. Any no. public comments? Within through here. Not online or. Yeah, okay. So, so I'd like to make a motion that we ask Nelson Pope and Voorhees to draw a permit for um, this application to be reviewed at the December 7th meeting. I'll second. So noted. Brant. All in favor? All those in favor? Aye. Wow, what is that? That looks like. Um, that's really <laughs> good. Wow. Well, Who's that guy that works for Trump? That weird guy that has a mix on his back? Huh? Stephen Miller. No, who's that weird guy? Nada. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. It's really strange. Um, new business. Uh, David Burke and Anitha Leahy, 62 Joel's Lane. Hi, Lori Wilson, Planning Services, representing the applicant. I believe David Berg is online. Yeah. I think that's him. Sorry. Yeah, I think that's him. David, you're sideways. We need a motion to open the public hearing. I make a motion to open the public hearing. I second. So noted. Uh, well, I'll say that again. Lori Wilson, Planning Services, representing the applicant. So I believe we're online. Okay. Um, so we were here before you with a discussion item quite some time ago. Uh, at the time, the main comments were the dock and to move the pickle ball port back 75 feet from the wetland. Dock has been eliminated from the proposal, and the pickle ball port is not 82 feet back from the wetlands. Um, everything else is over 140, 136 to the pool. That's your next closest improvement. So the, the pool, pool house, apartment, garage, new residents are all over 130 feet back from wetlands. And the IA is now um, 236 feet back from wetlands. So overall, the garden that was closest to the wetlands is being removed. The existing house was closer to wetlands than the new house. The previous septic was closer to the wetlands than the proposed septic. And the uh, existing vegetation will remain. Um, we have some clearing going on, but up to 50 feet will remain in its natural state, uh, except the four foot path to the water. And what is the path made of? It's just clear. Just like mulch? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. There's, there's no, no construction. What is the uh, code right now about pickleball courts? There seems to be a lot of neighborhood um, consternation. I'm not aware of anything discussion. I don't think so. Uh, Right. I've heard about it in other jurisdictions. Yeah. So I don't know. And it, it, what's the material of the court itself? Standard playing court material. It's like a tennis court? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's very much like a tennis court. Okay. Mm -hmm. What is the um, the access road? Is there an easement to the house adjacent to you? There's a cul-de-sac. There's a oh. cul-de-sac and then off of the cul-de-sac to the house. It's not, no, it's not over our property. It's adjacent to our property. That driveway to the adjacent house. It's not an easement. It's just a driveway which is next to our house. Okay. It's not a driveway easement. Actually, I'm wrong. 
There must be some. It says driveway easement right here. So it is a driveway easement. Uh, that is our property, but for some reason it's dashed. The property line is dashed. I'm not quite Is sure. there any public right of way anywhere on that little uh, road off of the cul de sac? Can you see that? Joel's Lane is a public right of way. The road itself. Mm -hmm. But I'm just thinking about it, from the cul de sac over to Mash Park. Could you use that? Can you use that road to those two houses? Is is there any? I've never gone down that road. I don't know. It's another house. Yeah there's, there's, yeah, there's two houses there. It's owned by Ficarelli, and actually, Suffolk County owns part of the land. Fic Ralph Ficarelli. So you just answered. You just said something. Suffolk County owns part of that land. This little corner down here. Suffolk County. Huh. Yeah. Can I it's see little, that? It's a teeny little triangle that abuts the pond. I noticed on the tax map when I was doing the adjacent mailings. So I don't. Excuse me, it's David. Can I help clarify something? Yeah. The, the driveway is owned by our neighbor, and we have an easement over his driveway. It's private land to access our property. There we go. Got it. Oh, yes, sorry. I didn't understand where you're getting, but there's our driveway. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Don't drive. Any other questions for me? Yeah. Are you going to try to gain access to the to Round Pond for recreation or? That path is for taking a kayak or going down to stand by the water. Sure. Will you be able to see the pond from the house? So you just said you're not going to really see it. Um, but it's pretty vegetated in the, in the summer. Mm -hmm. Any, any questions by anybody? No. Um, Grant. Yes. Greetings. Um, all right, thank you for the presentation. Uh, just a few quick comments um, just to clarify some things for the board. This is a um, redevelopment of a currently developed property. I actually was able to visit this property. Um, and as part of the project, um, you should all have a survey in front of you. It would be helpful if you're looking at it. We will be clearing native vegetation to, to make the product work. It, the product does comply with all of the um, recommended setbacks from Chapter 285. This is a secret type two action um, because we are talking about residential improvements as a lot. Um, they suggest that no tree or vegetation um, removal will be required for the buffer. Um, I believe there was a previous request to do some um, improvements in the buffer, but they're now seemingly leaving the 50 foot buffer naturally vegetated. Um, we do recommend a couple of updates to the survey. I'm not quite sure what happened here. The original survey had all the setback, a lot of setbacks noted on it, but the survey that we got, that is that presumably is the updated survey, last dated. October 20th, 2023, shows no setbacks to the left. It's all on a chart on the right hand side of the property. Uh, yeah, yeah I, it I, got I, very I, complicated with all the lines going to all the different structures. So the surveyor decided to do it as a chart. It, that makes that's understandable, but generally we'd like to see exactly where those points are taken to. So, to. so we can clarify that they are the actual minimum setbacks to those structures because sometimes there is an offset. Um, if they can show just a few of them, you know, it would help us to uh, clarify that. Um, the details for the construction methodology would be important for the board on this one. You know, it's a fairly slow property. There's a lot of excavation going on, a few improvements. You're going to want to make sure that this one is um, um, going to be retaining all of the impacts to the confined areas associated with the proposed clearing and so forth. Um, and other than that, you know, it does comply with the standards. And uh, so, think, yeah, I think that, um, you know, if the board has any questions, now's the time to ask them. 
So obviously we have the proposed silt fencing shown on the survey. Yeah. Yep. So that should take care of that protection that you were speaking of. Well, no, it's, 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 the construction methodology goes beyond that. The board wants to make sure that all the construction equipment is you know, properly um, maintained and that you know, um, felling of trees and all of those things are taken into consideration with regards to um, the potential impacts on the adjacent wellness. I mean, you are providing a 50 foot buffer, but construction activity in and of itself does need to be um, you know, specified for the board and, and it's, it's permanent, so it's hard to secure. Okay, so construction me methodology yep. to come from the contractor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or the architect, or you know, whoever. whoever you know, I've noticed on a lot of uh, these lots that um, the construction trucks are all over the road. Right? The construction yeah, truck. and that's a you know, it's it's obviously difficult in some situations, but uh, people park on the road rather than you know. We did put a, um, a staging area. Yeah. So been a staging area. Yeah. Which would be off the road. Mm -hmm. Um. Is that sufficient? Right? No. So the yeah, board's right. right. purview is only in the final end. Of, uh, yeah, fair uh, enough. You, know, you can't get into where the trucks park on and off the site. Again, the construction of the is for the board to understand how it's going to be executed and whether or not it has an impact mm -hmm. on the, the weapons that you're, you're trying to have. So mm -hmm. cotton fill, you know, we, I, I don't think that profiles are necessary here for you know, depth of the swimming pool or depth of the fishing pool because there is a sufficient amount of separation between the surface and, and the water. groundwater. Yeah. But generally, that's one of the things that we want to look at, you know, whether it be impacts to groundwater from the construction. Um, that's part of the construction methodology. How are we going to excavate? Are we going to dewater? You know, again, given those separations, I don't think the construction methodology has to go that deep. And looking at those cross sections, but some assurance is that the, the product will be constructed with the understanding that you want to make sure that there's you know adequate um, recognition of proper um, construction protocol to ensure no runoff and and any impacts of the surrounding lands. Does does the pool house have a bathroom? I believe so. So is it is it is it shown somewhere how it's hooked up to the sanitary? No, I don't think it does actually. I'm looking at it. There's no sanitary system. There's a dry well, pool equipment, dry well. David, am I correct? There's no bathroom? I don't remember actually at this time. I would have to check. I know the new septic plant accounted for all the bathrooms that we were planning on the property, and that's what we'll stick with. Okay, we'll confirm with Anthony. Okay. All right, so we'll get back to you with the construction methodology and put the setbacks back on the survey. Just a couple of them. And so confirm whether there's going to be a bathroom or sanitary system uh, with the pool house. Yeah, and we're not concerned about the existing setbacks, just the proposed Proposed setbacks. Mm -hmm. But most importantly is the providing the buffer to show where that point is taken from with regards to. On the, the nearest point? Yeah, and generally we'd like to see some kind of action. They've got an ADU. Not a service buffer. Mm -hmm. they got an ADU here. Um, it's, well, you mean like we're going to put a covenant on it? I see. Yeah, it's the understanding that you will be doing a covenant buffer. The ADU okay. right here. Oh. Is that not part of the application? Did you misunderstand that? Well, we haven't put it on there. Covenant, covenant is buffer. So there's a bathroom in that. That there is. Yeah. Okay. I mean, does the board agree that they would like to see a 50 foot covenant to let them up? Yes. Yeah. 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 So, Will brings up a very interesting point that there's an ADU on this property, an accessory um, apartment. Yes. Yes. What size uh, is it? It's less than 600 feet. That's We've gone back and forth with uh, oh. building on that a number of times. And tell, can you describe it a little bit? It is a one bedroom apartment. Studio. A traditional. Yeah, so a studio, a studio apartment. So a uh, bedroom and a bathroom. Look, correct. It does look like there's a sanitary line going to the house. Yeah. The apartment. Where does the sanitary go from yeah. there? <laughs> the ADU and the pool house, if there's a bathroom in there, were all on the plans when we gave it to the 
uh, septic engineer who pulled the permit for the, the health department, and they were all accounted for. Yes, but I do not see we, the sanitary line going to the house from the pool house, so I will confirm that with Anthony. Okay. I think this is really cool. In a, a very nice project. Thank you. Um, and I, I'm really impressed to see the ADU in there. That's, Thank you. Uh, is that for you, your kids, or? You uh, have... my, my wife and I have four kids and one grandchild, so we're you. planning for the future. So, yeah, so whoever's in. bad, you stick them in the ADU until they come well, around. Well, I think the teenagers are going to fight over it. Uh, great. Good, very good project. Um, so we can close this to the public. No. We have to keep it open. They're coming back to us. Have to ask if anybody yeah, is somebody here? Is there anybody here? Yes. Would, Would you, you like, like to speak comment? on this? Sorry? Would you like to speak on this project? Sure. Oh, pardon me. <laughs> Thank you for your patience. Uh -huh. I was asleep. Uh, my name is Tom Fabiano. I live on Joel's Lane also. Uh -huh. uh, just some questions. It, it's, it's hard to understand this when you don't have anything to look at. Uh, is there a... Uh, yes. or something? Uh, this is the wrong one. Is the house going to be now? Tearing down one and putting up another. I think the house would be a little under four thousand square feet. Four thousand square feet. What size is the lot? How big is the present house? Two thousand square feet. And the lot is so none of our concerns whatsoever. Yeah. Well, it's answering the questions for the neighbor. Yeah. The, the, the lots north north of fifty thousand. Okay. I guess a worrisome thing is the fact that you're a, a pickleball court. Uh, I've been reading different things about, uh, I think Southampton Town's looking into it, East Hampton Town's looking into it, but not allowing it in, you know, to your neighbor's house because of the noise. And here you are on a pond, which I grew up on, and now we're adding a, a pickleball court and I'm looking at the property now, like I'm just wondering where's the rainwater gonna go? Every, every, almost everything is built upon here. Uh, with the pickleball court, I don't know if you, I'm sorry. Guys. These are all drainage drinks. Drainage drinks, drainage drinks, drainage drinks. Um, for your mm -hmm. town spouse and stuff for the house? Yeah, that's here for your pickleball court. There's drainage drinks for every right, structure right, right. here. But you're saying this is out of a material. Elizabeth, okay. do we? So, just with respect to the pool court, there are, um, did you get, you got variances for the front yard? Because Brown Pond's the front yard, right? Variances for accessory structures in the front yard. Good point. Because it's considered you allow an accessory structure to be in the front yard and need a variance from 300 to, I think it's 9.14 or something under the garage. Um, well, any, any proposed accessory structure, the pool, the pickleball court, the pool house, yeah, all in the front yard. The ground pond is on more front lots, but more obviously the water the feet, right? Is right? right? a pickleball court something? So those might require variances. You should check the building department. Wetlands jurisdiction area? Right? And for the purposes uh, it, it's of. Not quite um, a thing. It's a hard but one. But court, I think it falls under the definition of the tennis court. As a tennis court, it's yeah. a net and any ball doesn't specify, which I think this is a net and any ball. So I think they need a variance to be in the front yard, but I don't think it's, I think it's encompassed by the tennis court definition. Yeah. Um, There's anything about a tennis court being within 150 feet, the full wetlands uh, jurisdiction? I'd have to check. I, I don't have it. It's an accessory structure. So I don't know that it's required to be 150 feet. I can look. Um, but it does require 15 foot side yard setbacks, which it has mm -hmm. from the neighboring property. Mm -hmm. 
The building inspectors reviewed this multiple times, and we did have an issue with the size of the accessory apartment twice. I would be very surprised if he didn't pick up on variances being required for we <laughs> Well, it's the front yard, right? And those are accessory structures. So wait, wait, I, I'm sorry, I'm con confused. Um, what part of the property are you calling the front yard? The, the waterfront pond. On a waterfront lot, the water is the water side is the front yard pursuant to the code. I can read to you. Okay. Well, this is the wetland code, but yeah. It clears this project, doesn't it? Is there still under the pickle board? No, 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 no. Yeah, no, there's a project under the pickle board. You reviewed this twice now. Because it's in great change. I think level it. Can I ask a question? Sure. The pool house, how big is that? The pool house. Code is 150 or something. It's less than that. It's to code. 12.5 by 15. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Y
ordinances. Well, are. I'm just bringing it up because I, I know, as I said, I've in different places are getting very concerned about it. Right. And there's but we have no. We have no jurisdiction over the pickleball court or the harbor committee. So we right. just have to make sure no, that no, it yeah. registers right. the right setbacks from the wetlands. The courts, mm -hmm. Sometimes for tennis courts, they say the they the the water 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 shrubs to just run out the sound. They do sound attenuated stuff. So okay. Um, do you have more questions? I know the village doesn't have anything for trees either, it seems. Like We're working on it. The only place that allows everybody to take down a tree on their property. Yeah. And like, you know, I don't save any trees here. All the trees in the buffers. Everything in here and everything in yeah, here. Yeah, that's all. And some and some large trees will remain, yes. Okay. Will the lawn be fertilized? No. Okay. Thank you very much. Continue your investigation. Yeah. It's it's great when neighbors come up. Uh, you, it's your neighborhood. It's a nice neighborhood. Well, it is a nice neighborhood, I'm sure. If you're, consider, if you're concerned about trees and tree cutting, Mr. Fabiano, I'm sorry? if you're concerned about tree cutting, there's legislation um, at the village board meeting on the 14th with some restrictions on what kind of trees can be cut down when. And it'd be really great to have you Take a position. Come. I never understood that why they, they allow. Well, we're trying to make that a narrower window of what they can take down. Okay, but we need help. <laughs> yeah, input before the for the village board at the next yeah. meeting. They'll have it before them. Okay. So I should say, uh, talk to the building inspector. He says we don't need zoning board. We get everything back oh. to you for December eighth. If we have to go to the zoning board, this will all have to wait. I believe. Yeah. Good night. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So, do I hear a motion to table this until December seventh? If if you come, yeah, till December seventh or when you come back. Right. Thank so you. if you well, don't, you're not, you're if you're not ready to come by December seventh, so then if we need it, that's the problem. Billy inspectors they have this twice on his desk and picked up other things and not that. No question that you need it. So the thing is, is that if we're going to put you on for December seventh, but if you're not ready to come, you just let Doris know. We'll adjourn. And then it'll get adjourned. Yes. Okay. Great. Thank okay. you. Good Thank luck. you. Bye. Do I hear a motion to adjourn this until? Our next meeting. I make a motion to adjourn her. Second. I second her. Uh, you second her. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so this has been tabled until our next meeting. Um, thank you, applicant. We have one last to go. Homeowner. Uh, we have correspondence requiring action 68 West Water Street. <laughs> Is there anybody here for 68? The applicant is. It's Dennis Downs, right? So I wanted to get some clarity on this. 68. Is that Dennis Downs? Yeah. yeah. Dennis Downs is 64. No, no, no. 68 oh. was the one that you guys approved last meeting. This is Brad Mighty, he's Billy Mack. Oh, right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Billy Mack is on. Is he on? Oh, yeah. Hi, Billy. Hello, guys. <laughs> uh. Sorry. Oh, Billy, I can make this really short unless I miss something. They're not. Adopt the resolution to approve your. I thought session. we did. I think we had to, they had to come I, back. They had to come back, right? Was there something I, missing? I didn't have any notes that said he should come back. No, I think it's just up for formal uh, approval. This we have to still approve it. Thank you. Okay, the resolution extending the permit. Yeah. I thought you approved it last time. Yeah, pro I, proof. I know it's indicate, and I want to watch the. Right. Because, so because I thought one of the things we wanted just was like some detail on, on your technique and how successful it is. Lily and I were out on a boat and we noticed that there's varying degrees of Phragmites in front of the villas. Are you working on all of them? What is this staggered step by? Are you- I, I, I think what you're seeing, uh, Marianne, is the uh, the growth of the stronger plants. Wait, wait. I'm just looking at it. I'm just looking. Yeah, I'm looking for them right now, yeah. How silly is it? I'm sorry, Billy, what? The, I think what you're seeing is the growth of the stronger plants compared to the weaker plants. The weaker plants are a little lower, and I yeah, I, but it's like chunk, yeah. chunk, chunk. It's different sections. It's um, not like interspersed, but hmm. well, we do leave the native vegetation, so we're just cutting the Phragmites. All right, so maybe and there that's... are some taller native vegetation. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
Um, but yeah, but, uh, and I did uh, give a quick report to you guys last time, a, a written one that I handed out. Um, so if you have any questions, happy to answer them. But it's a pretty straightforward, similar to what we've been doing there. It just says in our notes, we requested additional information regarding the status of the existing project. Oh, is it because there had some it already started? It's been going on for three years, right? Yes. Yeah. And I we approved uh, that we approved it. Extension. Yeah, we approved the three year extension. That's what my notes show. My notes show the same. And we did just ask Billy to give us some monitoring, you know, come back to us and give us updates on how it's doing. Right. And we talked to him about alternate technologies that we could. You know, we could, oh, that's right. right. We talked about, about an alternate and, technology, yeah. right? He said he would think about it and, and possibly go to the DEC and see if that's something that the DEC would be willing to permit because MPB would promote the Harbor Committee considering it. That's an right. Alternative. But it was, it, was a, it was a recommendation to him. Mm -hmm. uh, the board still did approve the three year um, extension. At least that's what my notes say. Yeah, I think you're right. But I do. Uh, I mean, I didn't. I don't know why it appeared on the agenda other than maybe that it was just a miss. Yeah. Well, it's because they said that we requested additional information. I assume that's why it would be on the, you know, put back on the agenda. I don't know. But additional information. You would have it might have been the the nuance between the different ways of uh, er eradicating the Phragmites. Yeah, I think, I, think, I think for informational purposes, we may have asked for, for information, but not as a condition of the, no. of, the, of the permit. I think we're good to go. Yeah, I think you are too, unless Billy, you have, have you talked? No, to but um, I do remember us talking about that, Brant, the alternative uh, methods. And I, if you get a chance, send me what you were referencing and I, I'll dive deeper into it and see if that's something I can go back to the DEC with. Well, it was a, there was some discussion about the roots. Uh, yeah, it was a matter of how you cut the roots. Yeah, it's yeah, a, it's a, oh, the bleeding. roots. There was like a dagger or something. The, the root assassin. The root assassin. The root yeah, assassin. My, my, my notes said that, that MPV had a question of cutting uh, rhizomes at the roots. That's the root assassin. We, we talked <laughs> to Billy about yeah. that. That uh, that method, but the board didn't say you know he would well, have had to had sought a permit modification from the DEC, which we said is something we would consider he you know um, explore, but the board never you conditioned your extension. No. <clears throat> that, yes, yeah, right. That, that, yeah, we'd like to know, but uh, okay. So yeah. let's. I'll yeah. work with Billy. I'll give uh, him the information, and then he can right. see. But him. do you have a permit? Did you write up a permit for him, an extension? We don't, we don't write it up. It just, just adopt a resolution. Adopt a resolution. Yeah. Okay. So okay. can we go ahead and do that? You did. Yeah. We did. Yeah, that was done. You did that already. Right. 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 He's just right. visiting. Bye, yeah. Billy. Let's, go. <laughs> hang. Let's move on here. Mr. Do I hear a motion to say goodbye to Billy? Yeah. Bye, yeah. Billy. Okay. Bye, Billy. Bye, uh, guys. Thank you. Uh, BNS Courtyard. A little stiff. Um, and I've been selling environmental. I was here last month uh, to renew uh, the original wetlands permit in June 10, 2019 for just the dock. It was unknown to me that there was another permit afterwards that was granted for the dock and all the upland improvements. So we talked, Grant, you suggested that I uh, rescind my request for the dock permit and go for everything, renew the entire um, project. Upland dock, which I did in correspondence on the 16th of October, uh, project's identical. They're about, according to the owner, they're about two months away from finishing up. This is the new house that's being, yeah. the so-called pool house. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, the, the project remains identical. No change for it. Okay. Oh, and then also don't forget the, the transfer as well. It was originally under a uh, Dixon Marcos name. Um, <coughs> and we'd like to transfer it to the BNS courtyard now. So. That's the exist the new owner. The new one, yeah. yeah. Brand? Um I believe this is exactly as we discussed. Uh, so there was a point of clarification on the two outstanding permits. Um, I think that Matt Ivins and um, the applicant are making the right choice. And 
seeking to extend the permit that is actually comprehensive permit for all of these permits, right. which includes the dock. Um, so other than that, we have no objection to the renewal at that point of clarification. What are we extending? Are we extending the original dock permit or are we extending the comprehensive permit that includes both? And now we know that we're extending the comprehensive mm -hmm. permit. And since the work on the upland is nearing completion, you know, um, Matt is going to need to submit a notice to the Harbor Committee to you know, um, try to close out that permit once the dock, I guess, is completed. Oh, well, yeah, we have to start construction. Yeah, so it's just a matter of he won't submit a notice of completion when the upland improvements are completed. He'll submit that once the dock is completed. And is there a planting plan? There should have been one uh, approved by this board for the purpose of the upland and dock permit. Right. So that would, we that'll wouldn't. Be implemented. Yeah, that'll be, that hasn't changed on Right. It was before this board approved by the board. It hasn't changed. But we'd wait until all of that's in place before we. Yes. Okay. All right. So thank you for your patience. Uh, yeah. And we, to it. Yeah. Yeah, we have to we have to approve the renewal of the permit. Yes. Yeah. Do we have a and do we need to close? Is this a public meeting? We're closing yeah. a public meeting. The okay. Yeah. All right. So I make a motion that we um, approve a consolidated extended permit here. I second. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Oh, no, so. Does it have to mention the name transfer from DeMarco to Clifford? Oh, new and consolidated. I think that's yeah. under the new owner's yeah. name. Yeah, you need a you hand on there, Matt. Huh? Are you okay? Yeah, it'll work itself out. Yeah, a um, thank you. Yeah, I'm so old. Okay. Good night. Um, 64 Germain. It looks like no one is. Is anybody here? Uh, oh. Okay. Oh. So I make a motion to adjourn 64 uh, Germain until Aye. December 7th. I second. Okay. Aye. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So noted. Um, May you adjourn? I just, I'd, I'd like to make a very quick one sentence report in terms of environmental matters. Uh, we have uh, 100 Glover. No, no, that was Brian just said that. Oh, that was, yeah, that's right. We did yeah. that. Sorry, and did we, make, did we approve the minutes? No. No. I read the minutes. The only thing I saw was instead of a circular staircase, it should be not a circular. Uh, did you write? That's Doris. She no. Okay. So then we'll just we'll we'll, we'll hold them until, over. Yeah. Okay. But, and you got we've got to correct that sixty eight West Water Street on there. Yeah. I just need a motion to staple that. I make a motion. I second. Okay. So all those in favor? Aye. Okay. So we will take we will review this next month. John, you had a question, comment? I just wanted to say that in, in the last two weeks, uh, we've uh, received approved grants for an additional $3 million yes. toward our uh, sewer extension. Yeah, I saw that. That's great. Well, some, of, some of it you couldn't have seen because it didn't happen until today. But No, I read it. No, I read $900,000 and well, yeah, then whatever. I read nine hundred dollars for the upper code. What is that about? That's the uh, Southampton side extension. No, well, let me, well, let me explain if I, if you want a further kind of explanation. Quickly. Yeah, quickly. Can you do it quickly? Uh, okay. $900,000 $900, for additional funding for area K, uh, which is basically sort of like behind Main Street and over. Um, uh, a million dollars for, and that was for construction, complete the construction. That's the total amount of additional money we need to do the construction for that area. The uh, what was referenced as as toward the cove, what was sort of phase two, where we're sort of going down Main Street and over toward the toward toward the cove for engineering for an additional it could be up to two hundred uh, properties to be attached. That's great. The other one that was approved uh, today, I hope, because I didn't have time to confirm, but uh, would be another million dollars from East Hampton uh, toward area L, which is on the East Hampton side. 
uh, which is not the full amount of money we need, but it, but it's we're up close to three million dollars for for that area. So it's enough for us to begin construction. So did anybody happen to read that email that I sent? Let's oh, close the, let's close we're going to close the meeting. Yeah. I, 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 I move that we <laughs> I second. close it. Thank you. All those in favor. Uh, 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 we are oh 20 minutes till eight. Right. Grant.